Hey everybody, Ken Plume here, and welcome to another edition of Force 5, the show where I have a very special guest on. We talk about their top five favorite Star Wars action figures, collectibles. The, those rules have gone out the book. It's very loose. <laughs> it's more about the conversation and having fun, and I think I'm, I know I'm going to have a lot of fun because I've been looking forward to this conversation with, uh, I, you know, I'm going to start off and just say, an amazing author Thank of you. numerous books. Uh, Phil Showstack, thank you for being on the show. In fact, I have a stack here, just <laughs> just so people know how impressive now the bookshelf that you're building is. So a, a, we'll start a with show that. stack of of my books. Uh, that's what it's going to be labeled now. <laughs> the The bookshelf has been rechristened the show stack. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, but I, I, to my dismay, I can't figure out where I put my last Jedi. So we're gonna skip from that. So uh, yes, all these people need to know how heavy this stack <laughs> of books is. These are not light books; they are incredible art of books. Uh, a, a field I know well, if people know what I've done as well. So I know yep. the amount of work that goes into these. Uh, and yeah, you, you deal in a lot more secrecy than I did when it came yeah, to arguably so. the projects that I was working on. So, but that is an incredible stack of books. Does it feel like that many? No, no way. I mean, I can really, it, it, it doesn't feel like, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's because I started writing the first one, Art of the Force Awakens in 2013. So yeah, it's been 10, 10, 10 years. years. So happy anniversary. Thank you. Welcome to this it's... celebration of 10 years of the show stack <laughs> of books. Exactly. Little did I realize that we were going to be celebrating a big anniversary here today. Um, uh, there yeah. will be cake later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I think I hear a knocking at the door, actually. Is that the, is that the cake? Good. That was excellent planning, timing, and coincidence. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's wild to think because like you just do them one at a time and each one is a huge challenge and a different challenge. And, um, yeah, and it's kind of been a pretty good cadence of around, you know, one year since that, you know, um, first of the new films came, came out. So yeah, it's, uh, Certainly it's just having been, the TV shows to buffer that out has helped as well. For sure. For sure. Yeah. With consistency. And, yep. And that, and the most recent one, you know, written completely, uh, during lockdown, the art of the Mandalorian season two. So that that presented its own challenges because I wasn't able to meet anyone in person or go to the set and just had to kind of uh, figure out how to do that that particular book just completely from home. But you know, the obviously, change in methodology that that felt substantially different. Um, I mean, it was really just having to communicate in a different way as we all had to do, you know, from our homes. And you know, um, outside of that, it was pretty much the same uh, i tend to write these books uh well a, a large part of the writing takes place during like our holiday break so while everyone else is with their families and enjoying their their holidays i'm working away on an art book typically this is not your principal job so it is not <laughs> it is a night and weekend <laughs> second job and yeah and and you know i think a lot of people you know may assume that this is just part of my day job but yeah i had really no intentions of being an author ever i never thought i would write a book much less a, a you know a show stack of books um you know it's just that's gonna that... stick that is officially stuck <laughs> and Kristen, it was my own... Kristen baber is watching this right now <laughs> oh and by the way gonna, for your 10th anniversary is gonna buy you a show stack <laughs> of bookshelf yeah. yes well we actually joke you know she's got she does have my books and i have her books and you know um and a, a friend of mine kind of jokingly said that he was going to start the, the Phil Shostak Memorial Library in his home. And now I have the Kristen Beaver Memorial Library in my home. So um, not to get more of it, but yeah, like, uh, and Kristen you need to have readings high, back and forth. You have a reading at, at her memorial and you have, a, and she has a reading over at yours. <laughs> Precisely. Yes. And Kristen says, hi, by the, Kristen says hi, by the way. She, um, I was just chatting with her earlier. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about podcast, you being so. an enabler of her collecting. Oh, did she happen to mention that during her time here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is true. Um, In the best possible way, but most definitely an enabler of. By the yeah. way, did you know that this thing's available? You need to, you need <laughs> yes. to get this. Get on this. This is. Aren't you excited? Yep. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, and 
you know, for a long time, she was kind of the person who was more on top of what was happening, especially in the world of like black series than I was. Um, and those roles have kind of reversed, like, and it's a typical, like with a collector, the ebbs and flows of, you know, you know, your, your, how invested you are in the hobby, like, you know, and all that stuff. And I've, I guess I've been kind of flowing and she's been more ebbing in recent years, but that might switch again at some point in the future. Who knows? Well, I mean, you never know what, what character might suddenly strike you as one you want to have on the shelf. Exactly. So have you ever been a completionist at any point in your collecting? No, I would and not just for Storm, we're just not. in general. Are you are you someone well, <laughs> who dives deep? I am definitely someone who dives deep. Like I yeah, like I my interests just as a human being, like from music to movies to everything, is like a very tiny pond that's like a thousand feet deep. You know, it's like it's like a, a sinkhole. Um whereas I yeah, I tend to go deep in the things that I love. So if and you get interested are, in a band, you're a catalog person. Exactly. Yeah. And all the singles and the B-sides. And the, yeah, for sure. Um, and it's that way with films as well. And, you know, and as we'll probably get into it. Yeah. Like, you know, Star Wars was like kind of ground zero for my fandom just as a human being. Like it was really the first thing that I was into in that kind of way. Um, but uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely kind of collector who but not a completionist though like and i think it's maybe being a, an ot kid growing up in the 70s and 80s that you know kind of got used to like my first experience with star wars toys was playing with them imagine with you know imaginatively not like collecting them and putting them on the wall or keeping them min i mean there was really no one doing that you know at least the kids at the time i mean there certainly were you know maybe teenager adult collectors at that time who were you know trying to keep things you know trying to complete their sets and um keep things in good condition but you know yeah, my crash crash that falcon in the mud <laughs> yeah exactly yeah I, and, and for me growing up in new jersey i was you know in the winter i was taking my you know hoth fig action figures out in the <laughs> snow you know and some of them were getting lost in the oh, snow i mean that's until, like for having until... the hoth play i mean that's it's perfect yeah i was stuck in california during that <laughs> period so yeah it was all fake for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are you playing in the freezer again? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, and I was doing that too, honestly. That that was before there was like a Han and Carbon and action figure. There was Han the action figure in a block of yeah, ice cool in your freezer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So yeah, no, I've never been a completionist. Um, there are still some things I keep in the package, and it's usually something I'll get like a duplicate of or whatever. But I'm an opener, generally speaking. And I still kind of have that spirit of like wanting to mess with the toys and kind of play with them, even though I don't play with them in the same way that I did when I was a kid. Um, so what is so it even, about keeping them in the package or getting an extra one in the package that appeals to you? The ones that I keep in the package are the ones that I think either I have an extra of that I can open and then I keep, you know, have one for fun and then one for, for keeping. Um, and those are tend to be just ones that, or either kind of special for some reason, or the packaging is just that cool. And, you know, it's been far more tempting with like the retro style, you know, bubble on the card packaging that, that Hasbro has been doing a lot lately to keep them in the package. Um, but yeah, it's really, I'd say the percentage of things I keep in the package versus open is probably like, you know, maybe literally like between one and 5%, like just a very small percentage and that's partly also <laughs> i was i had a for a long time i was accumulating black series in the package and not opening them and they were just starting to like take over my life like there was just when was, they start to become building materials when you're like yes. i could make a wall out of these <laughs> exactly i don't know if you've ever seen the the peewee's uh holiday special peewee herman christmas special the playhouse one but everyone keeps giving him the gift of uh of fruit, uh, cakes, fruit right? cakes exactly <laughs> And he builds a whole wing on the playhouse made out of fruit cakes at the end of the special. So, so are you how close are you to completion on the Black Series on the, wing? On the Black Series wing, it was you know I was getting very close, and then I realized this is ridiculous, and I need to start opening some Black Series, which which is what I did. Um, uh, two years ago, I moved, so that was kind of the incentive. I was like, I need to wrangle this stuff. Like, there's just no way I'm going to be able to move with all this. So I started doing what I did back in the day with like the power of the force line, which is like crack open my figs, put them in Ziploc bags, put those in storage bins, you know, and the Ziploc kind of keeps, you know, the accessories with the figures. 
and and just have bin stacks of bins instead of stacks and stacks and stacks of of black series packaging so what do you choose you know what is your criteria for making it on display as opposed to being in the bins uh <laughs> very, <laughs> very little is on display let's just put it that way that's the sad part is that you know um what what in your heart right now if you were to think about it, that you know is in one of those bins that you would love to pull out and just put on your desk in front of you no one else well, would see it you're on zoom calls all day you're uh you know you're, I mean, I you're could, working i could definitely show you like what's on my desk in front of me right now um and... well, you're, you're going too shortly some <laughs> of the stuff that's in front of you well, that i don't I'll... know about <laughs> yes i mean well, is there any is there anything from your list without telling me what's on your list yes that that could remain on your desk after our conversation quite possibly yeah um yeah, I mean, it was funny though. Going, I was mostly kind of researching both on the internet and in books for this podcast to try and like really wrap my head around the entire history of Star Wars action figures, which like <laughs> you think you kind of have a grasp on it, but then you're like, oh my god, it was it's so much more massive than you even remember. Once you get into the two thousands, it just yes explodes. explodes. And that's kind of when it started to tail. That's what that was the time when it was kind of ebbing for me because I think. It was a overwhelming, <laughs> and and b like I was broke. <laughs> it was before. <laughs> it was like I I, I was. Li- There's a whole story behind all of this, but I, you know, for a while I was living in Montana, and I was you know that was in the lead up. That was like during the special edition in the lead up to episode one was when I was living in Montana, and I was collecting. That's what got me kind of back into collecting, and then when I moved to San Francisco. And I had to kind of start from scratch, like without a job, without a place to live. <laughs> you know, I was like sleeping on a friend's couch and stuff. Like my budget for that kind of thing was smaller than ever. So I just kind of left it behind for a while. Um, and it wasn't really until the Black Series started kicking in um, that I really kind of reengaged fully with collecting again. Um, when it laughably and... in hindsight seemed like a more manageable line. Yes, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's Look at this handful of wonderful characters they released. I can I can keep up with this every exactly. couple of months. I'll get like two or three figures. That's that's fine. Yep, yep. And that uh, you know, as you know, as you're intimating, has changed. And but I mean, it's such a renaissance right now. I feel like I'm I'm you know just going way off topic and stuff. But um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm happy for uh, how much Black Series is coming out and and how great the figs are and and you know um that i've been able to kind of get back into it um because i felt like i you know at a certain point i thought like oh maybe i've just left that whole collecting action figures thing behind but there's just no way like there's no way given like the quality and how much is coming out and how deep it's getting again like that i there's no way i would have been able to ignore it for for long you know if you're enjoying the things that they're representing absolutely yeah no and yeah well and you know it's funny like you might think that after 15 years with lucasfilm there might be a point where which i'm like yeah star wars is cool but you know it's my it's something i'm doing as my job every day so you know i'm a marvel you're kind of, guy you know, or, or you're just starting to lose your <laughs> lose your passion a little bit or something but it's like i still just i think i feel like i love it as much as i ever have and um and i really love you know and it feels weird to say this but i I love a lot of what we're doing and um you know and and one show that comes to mind is the bad batch i just love that show and was so excited to place the pre-order for those uh season two black series that you know like this just uh, arrived today yes yep one of the most remarkable sculpts on yeah. a three and three quarter inch figure oh, yeah uh, grab. Let's see if we can give you a chance to look at how what, what that <laughs> nice. sculpt is. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it, it's amazing. Yeah, what they're able to do. But then they then you go. But where's the rest? How am I going to get the <laughs> yes. rest? Yeah. Where are they? Why are <laughs> you need to get these out faster? Yeah, it feels like the vintage collection fans are, are to. I mean, you know, it's a tricky thing because you know. I'm sure Hasbro wants both Vintage Collection and Black Series fans to feel sated and to feel like they're getting everything. But there's definitely jealousy that goes back and forth, like where we'll like Black Series people consistent. will see. 
Yeah. I mean, no one can say, well, this one's being favored in this. Well, then the other one will oh, get no. that. And then, then the other side exactly. will say, but the other side's getting this. <laughs> and sometimes precisely. it's good, yeah. you know, you know, for, for someone who is immersed in the development process as well mm -hmm. and seeing those designs and development designs, you know, people remark on the fact that if you got those Black Series Bad Batch figures, there's a lot aesthetically that isn't what it is in the final product in the show. Yep. So if you give it some time, you might get a better fidelity just because of how far out they were working with designs and having to finalize the production process. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, th that's definitely a factor. And it's like something that we try to, you know, that, you know, I try to balance out, you know, the collector side of me, like, you know, and I understand people can be, you know, impatient and, you know, I, I see, I, I would rather things just personally, you know, be as good as they can be rather than come out immediately. Um, but you know, it's, it, that's a personal preference thing. I and... wonder how much of that is a generational thing Yeah, for, for folks of, I'll say our generation mm -hmm. when, you know, it, if you think of star Wars at the time when, you know, when we're talking eighties Kenner, uh, yeah. or even power of the force two and episode one, all these uh, figures came out before the films came out in a lot of ways and were, were. Mm -hmm spoilers for things you know don't even knew the word then but it was oh well this is a new character yep. everything was on the shelves as well yeah i mean you know people today don't have a concept of the massive figure uh dump debut that was like episode one where there's just all these characters you had no idea about outside of a trailer or some art yep and you having no idea of like their role in the in the film and like how important they beforehand. were beforehand yeah. You're just sitting with these figures going, I wonder what they do. But I Who mean, is this? Yeah, but it was a completely different time, you know, a, a time before, you know, it, I mean, the internet existed, but it was like a time before, like, spoiler culture and the concerns around, you know, the secrecy around those things. And yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's... it's And companies weren't quite as protective of that no. information. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were novelizations also coming out prior to films of the entire story. <laughs> and or sometimes, that, yeah, sometimes a soundtrack might spoil something. Yeah. But, you know, I, it, as as we were just talking, like I was reminded, and this is something I meant to do, a preparation I meant to do for this podcast before, before uh, I came on. And, you know, but thankfully I found the tweet really quick. But yeah, I don't know if you saw the tweet that I did a while back, but um just as like a kind of a reality check, though, for how things were in the in you know the original trilogy days, um, that you know all the New Hope characters didn't show up until a year after that film came out. Um, characters like Forlom, Anakin Skywalker, General Lando Calrissian, and Endor Luke took two years after uh, Return of the Jedi came out until they were released. And Han and Carbonite. Yeah, um, Stormtrooper Luke didn't come out until eight years after his first appearance in the New Hope. Um, Hut Slayer Leia didn't come out until 14 years after Return of the Jedi. Um, Mon Mothma, uh, Mon Mothma action figure didn't come out until 15 years after Return of the well, Jedi. Look at Tarkin, Tarkin just 20 years. <laughs> Biggs and Owen Lars were 21 years. So, and Porkins, you know, yeah, uh, one that I wanted as a kid. Yep, so you know, there's two sides <laughs> to this discussion <laughs> in that sense, but. You know, and you had to be patient, but it, yeah, I mean, the, the figure lines also back then weren't obviously as deep as they did eventually get. Um, but yeah, you definitely had to be patient in, in, um, in those days. And I think we got really spoiled in the, you know, in the salad days of the 2000s as we were talking, you know, and then episode one, you know, really, that's really what kicked it off. Well, it's where... just, it was just a density. I yeah. think, but th I was just talking, I, I think maybe it was on one of the recent open chats that I had. Uh, if people haven't seen those, that's where I have so much that I just need to open and I have a guest on to have a conversation <laughs> while, I, while I open the, the figures that have been stacking up because yeah. I can't store them sealed because mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, the idea of, you know, that the figure lines could go deep dive because there was lulls in between the yeah. movies. That, so you had a chance true. to catch up and just explore the universe and to keep the line going 
yeah, by doing keep, those deeper dives. To keep the line alive, they kind of had to because, you know, they were otherwise going to, you know, just, yeah, I mean, they wanted to keep it alive in people's minds, and but there was only so many, you know, especially then, I mean, uh, so many Luke, so many Hans, you know, the major characters. Um, and I think they would reissue some of those, like, characters like um, Darth Vader and stuff, obviously, because they were kind of evergreen figures. They would uh, do for... new sculpts. That was the unique thing. I yeah. mean, it's it's a weird time. I don't know if people can comprehend what the original <laughs> Kenner days were. <laughs> yeah. You could go in and see all the figures from the entire run of the figure line all on the shelves. Yeah. Everything was kept in stock. Yeah. Nothing ever was phased out. They might change the card backs to reflect the new movie and the amount of figures in the line. But you could always go pick up a, a Tuscan Raider. You could always go pick up a Vader. You could always go pick up a Snaggletooth. They just yep. they were there. They were yeah. on, they were on the pegs. Those photos of like Toys R Us's or Child Worlds or whatever. You know, I don't even think KB existed quite yet. But just those walls of Star Wars action figures is, is just insane. And vehicles, to, just just to yeah, see the vehicles. Yeah, just uh, it's wild. Um, it, but the two thousands, I think that every time, because every new line would have like their their core characters, mm -hmm. but they'd be new sculpts. They yeah. would do new versions of it. Yeah, I, I was more referring to way back in the day. Um, you know, the original Darth Vader. I don't think they would ever. Um, and that didn't you know, change. I mean, no, they would never update it. I mean, that, no. the comparison between that. There was like one, you know, like, you know, Endor layer or whatever. There was one, you know, like they would just, yeah, like they were not ever like really double dipping with characters. And you could see um, the evolution in the line. Oh, yeah. Between that and the, and the quality, the, the fidelity of the sculpts to the source material. Yep. The, the Return of the used. Jedi. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. It's when they started to get really deep in, it feels like the Kenner line as it was tailing off in like 85 or so was when they were like really hitting their peak, you know, and that's then it, why the then retro line ended. is weird when yeah. they're issuing these figures in what would be retro Kenner is it's retro Kenner in the first couple of years. Yeah. Because yeah, no, the, the last they... couple of years are feel akin to what you picked up with, with power of the force too. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, one of my favorite, Figures probably in uh, a uh, um, you know honorable mention, not one of my top top, but is from those later days. And it just kind of like as a as a little kid in in you know eighty five or whatever, uh, collecting these lines just went, like in a really obscure <laughs> character all of a sudden comes out, and you're just like, I don't even remember seeing this in the movie. And this is an amazing <laughs> action figure of a total weirdo glup shitto character, you know. I mean, also wouldn't... for some of us, you know, you might have seen it as a kid in the theaters, but pan and scan was the way that uh, the majority of, of my childhood was spent watching those films. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, while they were coming out, I don't remember the first what year the first, um, you know, VHS cop, you know, version of A New Hope came out. But um, but it, yeah, it was definitely in the 80s, but it was only for rent. You really couldn't buy it at first. You know they were they weren't priced to to sell. I think um, we bought our our family had a a RCA Select Division video player mm -hmm. with the if anyone who doesn't know what that is that is essentially a vinyl record that plays video. <laughs> uh, and Star Wars we had we had that by the time we left California, so that must have been eighty two. Yeah, that that would have been released. Yeah, we had that and Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I remember having this discussion with, you know, when I interviewed Ryan Johnson, actually, for the, the art of uh, The Last Jedi, speaking of, um, we, we were talking about how, like, back in the day, like, you wouldn't be able to so easily reference the films themselves. Like, and it was a lot of just, like, chatter between kids on the schoolyard, you know, just, like, pooling information from whatever sources you could get. And it would even alter your memory in some cases of what was actually in well, the yeah, film. We were all trying to reconstruct an elephant that you had seen once. <laughs> exactly yeah it's exactly like that <laughs> the aesop's fable of like you know like one's got the tail the other's got the foot oh, i could have like... sworn that character was in there no that <laughs> exactly. character was gone by then they're not it's, in the the big scene was the big one that kind of planted a false memory in a lot of people's minds that they thought they had seen it um uh when biggs comes back to, to tatooine um at tashi station a lot of people because it was in i think it was it was definitely in the radio drama 
I think there were photos it's from that scene in some of the too, isn't it? Ex- yeah, yeah, it is. And there were photos from it in some of the photo books. Um, so yeah, a lot of people, um, you know, in their minds could have could swear that they saw a version of it back in the day that that had that scene restored into it. Yeah, or, there's or no was way to part no of way it. to reference yep. for the, a lot of folks. Yeah. So yeah. Um, or even if it played on TV, if you didn't watch it on TV when it played, yep. you missed it then too. Yep. Uh, no, the kids today, they just, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that I could just literally on my phone or, you know, I'm, you know, even for my work, it's just the easiest thing for me to do oftentimes is just to get dial up, you know, Disney plus and look at the scene, you know, like, and even whatever, when I first started at Lucasfilm, you know, obviously that wasn't possible. And we would have like quick times of the films on the server or whatever, you know, to reference. And now it's just the easiest thing is to literally just get disney plus on, on for work purposes what film do you think you've se- seen the most gosh well that's what's funny because when i turn on disney plus just for pleasure it's often like in the middle of like 10 different things because of everything that i've been referencing <laughs> um gosh i mean well just recently i think it's and just today uh, what i was uh looking at was return of the jedi and um but i think i was looking at that very carefully quite a bit recently because of the from a certain point of view story that i wrote um which i will not go into any further that. thank you yeah no it's super exciting um you and Kristen yeah. both get to add the same book to the show that's actually true it'll be in both of our memorial libraries um <laughs> so, <obviously. laughs> so she can um, come over and read hers and you can go over to her library and read yours yes yeah and, and she was lucky enough to be able to already announce her character which i'm very jealous about <laughs> <laughs> uh, a celebration i think was where she first announced it but but yeah so um yeah uh gosh i mean probably with what we've been focused on you know i i one of one of my i mean i i, I do a lot of different <laughs> varied tasks at lucasfilm but one of the one of the ones that i've been doing for the longest time is like all of our comic books i review like every single page of artwork um at every you know stage which from pencils to inks to colors and and since those lines have generally been taking place in the ot era between the films um definitely probably because of that i think those are probably the films that i still refer to the most um and they're also just the foundation of so much of what we do um so yeah probably it would probably be the ot um but yeah it's just funny to you know every time i spin up disney plus just for pleasure you know to watch something or whatever i see all the things that i've like i'm in the middle of which is like everything it's just like this huge what's the weird... last one you finished <laughs> <laughs> the last one i the last film i finished or the gosh you know it's funny i, I i'm i've been holding off watching i mean it's you know return of the jedi I, I hate to keep mentioning it but it's the 40th anniversary this year and you know it's just in theaters, so uh, but I held off watching it in theaters on purpose because um, I'm planning on going to the Hollywood Bowl to see it performed live by the LA Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl, and kind of wanted to preserve the experience. And I just saw it last year. Uh, the USC uh, Star Wars fan club were gracious enough to invite me and Matt Martin to sc- to their screening of Return of the Jedi, and then to talk about the film afterwards. Um, so I guess it would probably be Return of the Jedi. Um, I'm not often watching them from front to back for pleasure because I feel like I'm just exposed to them like all the time. They're just kind of living in me 24 <laughs> seven to a certain. Do you degree. watch the Indiana Jones films for pleasure? Well, I mean, and I, I, you know, when you know, I worked on Visions, I worked on like Young Jedi Adventures, but it's just nice when it's finally out to watch it for real without like a watermark and stuff like on my real TV. <laughs> so, you know, I watched both of those quite recently, you know. Um, you don't want to yeah. see your name plastered across someone's face for the entirety of... Nah, it's not my favorite way to watch things. But you get, <laughs> it's funny, like I, I, you get so used to it. It's been years and years and years of that for me. Like it's on, you know, a lot of the images I see in our photo database. It's on, you know, any of the, you know, screeners or, or you know, early versions, early cuts. Um, just for security purposes so does that ever burn just... in your memory because that that being the first way you see a lot of these things in your initial experience not at all like you just kind of get used to seeing through it you don't even really see it anymore you know like I'm just so used to it that I don't even really notice it 
Do you remember the what the of... first thing was that you saw that had that watermark on it when you started working at Lucasfilm? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it was a long time before I saw it, though, because, you know, I was working in George's art department up at the ranch at first, so nothing was watermarked up there. Um, it was probably things that I was looking at in our image database, maybe Force Awakens stuff. I don't know. Um, when you say George's art department, how, what what was what was the the purpose and your position within? I was the coordinator of the Jack Films art department, which is the same art department that Faye David was the coordinator of for during the prequels. And um, so, yeah, the Jack art department was created, you know, for the prequels and was up in the kind of the attic of the main house at Skywalker Ranch. And, you know, obviously they kind of like temporarily shut down in 2005 after the, you know, the final prequel came out, but then spooled back up. Um, and that's, and I jumped on board. I think it had already been running for at least a year or more, maybe even a year and a half, two years before I jumped on board. Um, and that was at the very beginning um, of my 15 years. Back up for Clone Wars? Well, I was definitely helping out with the writers' conferences for Clone Wars. But um, it was for George's live action TV series, um, which I, of course, can't get into. But, you know, one day, um, it, one day <laughs> maybe, hopefully you'll be able to write that book. Although I do talk about it quite a bit in the art of the Mandalorian. Well, not quite a bit, but, you know, it's definitely mentioned because a lot of the same people who worked on that, including myself, would eventually, you know, many years later work on the Mandalorian, um, including Eric Tiemens and Ryan Church and myself. Um, so... And that was the same, like when I, it was a, it's a really full circle year for me. It's like 15 years exactly back in February from when I started a week before I started Ahsoka Tano, the character was revealed to fans before the Clone Wars movie came out. Um, so the Ahsoka series coming out this year is also just like, whoa, like that's a kind this of a cool year of anniversaries for you. you it 15, is 15 years at Lucasfilm. You got 10 years of 10 books. years of books and it was also within months of when John Favreau met Dave Filoni for the first time at Skywalker Ranch. That was like in February, that right around when I was hired was right around when that happened. And that's when, you know, John became, you know, Previsla and, and Dave showed John the Clone Wars and John showed Dave Iron Man and who knew So that... we need to invite them over for cake is what you're saying. They, Obviously. They yeah. Cake. Well, yeah. it's, it's a huge cake. I'm looking at it right now. You know, like it's. Listen, I appreciate it, but it's it's a lot. Only <laughs> cheap cakes are cheap. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, though. But it's a thought that counts. It looks don't, delicious. Don't eat it. Way. It's it looks that way. <laughs> it's all art department. <laughs> Do not eat the cake. <laughs> so before we dive in, and we're about to dive into your list. Be, be the going back to the start of your collecting, mm -hmm. and you can tell if this is something that is a spoiler because i again don't know what you ch have chosen yes. uh do you recall what the first star wars toy was that you got wow like it's funny that i've never thought that myself about like what is it because you know i had a both an older brother and a younger well i still do i have an older brother and a younger brother my older brother was two years older than me but he wasn't so much into star wars as much as me and my younger brother were and you know still are um, although my older brother now really loves Andor and the Mandalorian. Um, but anyway, long story short, um, I mean, we were getting that first bunch of figures as they were coming out in between 77 and 80. But I cannot tell you. But they were in a communal pot. of Yes. And it was my parents really buying them for us. We were all really young. So who knows which one was the first one to show up. But they were all very quickly being played with and integrated into our you know, or, or play probably with other figures and toys that we had and Legos and who knows what else, but. Is there um, anything else that, that caught your sort of collecting fancy eye at that time? Was there any other things that you were interested in? I mean, I very quickly as the eighties marched on, like, you know, jumped on board with, well, I can actually show you <laughs> some of the, I, I actually created a pile here of things that I just picked up that I've yet to like photograph for Instagram, where I share a lot of photos of my, like, recent acquisitions toy wise and everyone um, should follow you on Instagram thank you. as well yes phil shows deck on instagram I, yeah it's just phil shows deck i believe um but um yeah so um i had a really good run at target the other day <laughs> and found a bunch of exclusives um and it was actually on sunday during the holiday weekend and i think that's part of why i lucked out 
um, a lot of the you know stores like Target and um, you know we had you know had a um, some Toys R Us is nearby, but obviously they're no longer around. But uh, you know, ever since I moved to the Bay Area, I've struggled to find things in stores because there are a lot of nerdy folks in the Bay Area generally with the tech industry and you know Pixar and Lucasfilm and um, so it yeah, doesn't it's, sit on shelves. No, things move really quick, and um, and I think there's just also more of a, an awareness, especially of like the franchises and you know Lucasfilm and Pixar and um, other local studios. You know, it seems like um there's more of a heat in the air for that stuff you know collectors <laughs> are like you know they're just there's just more awareness and it's and it's just i find it re- harder to find things than i hear at least other people you know seem to have better luck in you know in uh, other places in the country but um but i had a really good day on sunday <laughs> i went there and was like actually i texted Kristen because i was like oh my god i found a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> and i actually got something for her too while i was there because it was something i had pre-ordered uh from target and Ended up just finding in the store, so I was able to cancel yeah, something my about Target is... and their pre-orders. Yeah, it's a bit of a dicey prospect. So I was just like, if I find it in the store, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it. But um, but I did want to share just a few things, and it'll give you a little, you know, one line that I'm um, you know, super into, you know, um, and it's obviously still in house, but the the adventure series um for oh, you got your Donovan Indiana Jones. Yeah, Donovan came in in the mail. That was not a Target. But um, I was able to find the Target exclusive Club Obi Wan. Um, you know, still have my pre order in for that. And I found two of them, and I gave one to Kristen. So I did pick owes, up this today, though. Hey, actually, I, <laughs> was that? A, did you find it at a Target that, or at a Target in nice. in the store? Yeah, I did not see him in the Target, but I did just order him literally earlier today. <laughs> Got the tip from uh, Paternia that that was uh, who, who you may follow on Twitter. I picked up that, and these also came into stock. Nice. Yeah, I did see Short Round at Target. Did not pick him up. Um, not a huge collector of the retro stuff, uh, but I'll show you some that I I'm do just have happy to it... have a Short Round yes. figure to go with. Well, and I'm excited for the Adventure Series Short Round, um, for sure. Um, I also found this retro style well, Boba Fett. That I'm jealous Target. of. Also, yeah. still on pre order. Yeah, and it's great. It was This actually confused Christy when I showed it to her because I was like, you know, she was like, wait a minute, is that the retro? And I'm like, no, well, kind of. I mean, it's like <laughs> retro colors on the current figure on a retro card, but not exactly the retro figure. You know, it's it's kind of hard to explain this figure. <laughs> and she didn't quite get the appeal exactly, but like this was one that I had. No, that's specifically well. targeted to a certain generation. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the average, although, I mean, I could see a little kid picking this up and being like, I like Boba Fett. This looks like Boba Fett. You know, I'm happy, yeah, you know, yeah. like that's all I uh, need. It says Boba yeah, Fett. Exactly. And you know, and it's close enough, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Because they did what? They did that and then the comic version as well, the comic yes. version. And I don't think that's out yet, but I have that on pre order as well. Um yeah, it's funny, like like I would not call myself like a dyed in the wool like Mandalorian like mega fan, but for whatever reason, Boba Fett's like always, always appealed to me. And we'll talk more about that a little later when we get into my list. But anyway, but yeah, and um, this is the last thing I, I picked up. Uh, actually, no, this was sent to me. Um, the end of this, uh, you know, Marvel Legends. I don't know what to call this line exactly because it's kind of retro, kind of not. But it reminds me a lot of a lot of those 80s superhero figure lines. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, Secret, Secret Wars. Wars. Yeah. And this is kind of the end of that line, which is sad. But they're really kind of ending with a bang with this Have particular figure. Have you gotten the figure. last wave? Yes, yep. I've gotten all. This is the very last one. I have the entire line, and this is the very last one. I'm going to crack this open at some point. It's a real shame that it's being put on pause. Yes, I, I guess I agree. we should say uh, is what they're saying. So it could come back, but they were doing so well, yeah, so consistently that yeah, it's it's disappointing that. But I'm also satisfied. Well, and it's <laughs> you know, it's like I'm, I'm happy we got a complete Fantastic Four. That made me very happy. Yeah, yeah, and there were yeah, and, and towards the end, did was Doctor Doom part of the final? He was. Wave? In fact, he's right yeah. on the desk. There's. Yeah, like that was one that I was waiting and waiting for, and when it finally came out, I was like, yes, finally Doctor. Because Doom. also in that Secret Wars line, we didn't get a classic look Doctor <laughs> Doom. We got the we Secret not. Wars weird Doctor Doom. Exactly. Which yeah, is why so. one of the first things I did as a kid was I made him his outfit out of uh, felt. Wow. 
cool. <laughs> so I, I I use the sewing skills I learned in home economics. Yep. To to make clothes for my Doctor Doom toy. That's nuts! Wow. No, you were way more skilled than I. I was just having to accept whatever was given to me in the store. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that line and this, and I also collected the was it called Superpowers, the DC one. Better. Um Yeah. Um, another great you know line um, that I have a lot of nostalgia for. So yeah, and so when Star Wars in the mid '80s really started, you know, after the Ewok films, and you know, I was getting older too, so my tastes were shifting. I got really into Star Trek, so I, I've definitely collected a lot of Star Trek toys over the years. Um, the Playmates line specifically, I collected Speaking the heck of out deep of. Dive line. Yeah. Ex- no. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I loved when they started to do like the, the films with the the you know the classic cast, you know the original series. I mean, it was just, it, yeah, super great. Um, and and I also got into superhero comics. I got really into wrestling at that age. You know, this was like junior high school, starting to, you know, get into different stuff. Um, but Star Wars was always in the back of my mind, you know, always, you know. Where did all of, the Star Wars figures from your childhood go? They just went into storage? Were they in an yeah, attic? Yeah, they were just kind of in the attic. And, and yeah, you know, I had the, the classic Darth Vader case, you know, so a lot of them just got locked in there like a you know archaeological find later you know like and yeah they just kind of got put away and a a lot of them ended up my niece and nephew ended up uh inheriting a lot of them uh when they were little kids and now they're in high school which is crazy but um yeah they um they inherited a lot of that stuff and I was happy to to give it to the next generation and to let them enjoy it in the way that I did you know I wasn't precious about that stuff which is part of the reason why I don't have a lot of in hand examples of some of those figures that'll be on but my list later. But... but now that they don't care, you can ask for them back, right? <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of I don't know. That would be a little weird. Be like, hey, can I have my Star Wars figures back? Is but, there um, anyone that is on your list that if they didn't care that you would ask back just to have your childhood one? Yeah, probably. But yeah, when we get to the list, uh, which should be shortly. Sorry to to delay, but um, but yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, there's one in particular I probably would feel pretty would feel pretty good to get back. But you know, again, I'm not really like precious about that stuff. Like But you're thinking um, about it. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> After this podcast, I'll be like, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, it was just locked away in like, another attic. Exactly. No, that's exactly what the point is. Yeah, that they're not not being enjoyed anymore. You know, for the second time, you know, they're just kind of gathering dust yeah, just again. Tell them so. Until they pass to another generation, you're gonna have <laughs> it on your desk and enjoy it. And it's it's still in play, but right now it's exactly. better than being locked away. Yeah. No, that's I mean, you know, these are all good points. You know, I might have to talk to my brother uh, after I talk to you. See what's going on with these classic, <laughs> loose, very beat up, extremely played with loose jointed <laughs> loose figures yeah i mean i i've said numerous times you know if i ever got my han solo investment gear back he had eyes that were repaired by me with a ballpoint pen <laughs> that's awesome. not a good way to repair those tidy eyes yeah yeah it basically looks like to. two sockets <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> i had a weird zombie han solo uh so i i as usual wait i asked you to pick five yes uh, I'm gonna have you rank them, okay, on the fly from five mm. building up to your number one. Okay. So uh, now this is this is not saying this is forever ranking. This mm-hmm. is just in the moment. So we're gonna start off with your number five. Yeah. Do you, ha- do you have um, a strong five? Do you have a strong last place? You, you know, them all as because they made them into your top five. Yeah. As I as I look at them, there's some that I there's some that are in my top five for very specific reasons and it's not necessarily the quality of the figure and it's not necessarily like sometimes it's just because there's like like a very specific memory like I'm a big believer like creatively and in life of like first thought best thought and when it came to making this list I was very instinctual like I was very like you know what are these what which figures immediately leap to mind when I think back at my Gosh, decades and decades of, of collecting stars figures. <laughs> like as I'm like thinking about yeah, it, it's you like, have, oh my you God. have an, an entire adult generation that inherited your figures. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, it's been a long, long uh, road of of collecting Star Wars figures. Now that I think about it, 
And yeah, and so so some are on this list for very strange reasons <laughs> that I will get into. Um, so I think those are the ones that are tending to be on the, you know, that are going to be in probably this five and four slot versus the the ultimate, you know, one. But um, and yeah, and and, and uh, yeah, so the one that I feel like kind of makes the most sense in that regard as number five is the original 78, 79. Boba Fett 12 inch figure, which I do not have with me, but that one jumped to mind again. I mean, I was always fascinated by the character, you know, a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of fans were uh, partly because of his mystery, partly because of his, just a helmet was so super cool that, you know, the helmet's like right here behind me. And it had the, the, view, the viewfinder in the figure. That is specifically why this one is on my top five. <laughs> this Purely is the $6 million the, the, man of Star Wars toys. Exactly. And like, like for whatever, like, and I had the $6 million man figure as well, but it, for whatever reason, looking through the eye of Boba Fett as a child made me feel so cool. Like it was like, <laughs> I am Boba Fett in that moment, looking through his eye. Like I'm looking at the world literally through the eye of Boba Fett. Um, so figure. that, that, you know, and it's kind of for no other reason. And I remember our exactly. Yep. There he is. And so yeah, that was an action feature. So for anyone yes. who doesn't know, you you can you it had a a pipe that you mm -hmm. could look through his head like you were, you were staring, looking through his sight there was a, literally a hole in the back of his head that you had a little <laughs> tiny hole that you could stick your eye up against and and see through and i think it was red through there as i recall yeah i think, I think it was a red lens yeah i think you were seeing red for for whatever reason and because you're looking through the visor yes. so the visor had like a dark red tint to it right and yeah, and straight through his head, which is kind of weird if you think about it. But, um, but yeah, so it was kind of like I just have a very distinct visceral memory of constantly going back to that figure to look through his eye. I think we only had two of the twelve-inch figures, as I recall, or at least there's only two maybe that survived, or two, you know, because again, that was I was pretty young, and those figures got a lot of action, <laughs> saw a lot of action, and got pretty beat up. <laughs> And I remember that Boba Fett just being so, like his joints were like so floppy and loose from being played with. But it didn't matter um, as long as that head was still there. <laughs> exactly. That was, the it, that, that was all that mattered. <laughs> exactly. But we also had the Chewbacca, as I recall, as well. Um, and both of those were, were, it was just cool to have something in that giant. Well, I mean, it felt really giant when you're small, you know, like those, those just felt huge. And it was just so cool to have something that big in your hands as a little kid. Uh, representing some of your favorite characters um but yeah we didn't go obviously didn't go deep with those i think those were the only two we had and if we had another then it, it wasn't it's not worth mentioning because i don't remember it but the two that i very distinctly remember uh us having were, were chewbacca and boba fett are there still in fett. the box of stuff that was passed down did those make it they were definitely in the attic but i'm not sure exactly if they were considered worthy to, to pass on you know <laughs> because they were pretty beat up and and completely out of scale with the rest I mean, I guess you could have like giant Chewbacca stomping around, like as if he took some kind of growth serum or something. But there's a part of you right now that's really wondering I, if I looked, I could look through its head again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what would life look like at this age? Through if the I eye found that, head? well, things yeah. would probably be a little blurry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd have to take off my glasses and be like, like, oh, okay, and yeah, it would it would be a, probably a different experience. A well, and the hole would probably be a lot smaller to my yeah, giant to adult find eyes. the hole. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It'd be, it wouldn't be quite the same experience. But um, yeah, I would say that's my number five, just because it's such a goofy reason why I love that figure so much. It's not like because it's super cool or because it's articulated or big. It's really just because of the, the hole in the back of the head that you can peer through. Um, it's very specific, we need closure silly reasons. We need, at yes. some point, we need closure to know if this still is extant. <laughs> exactly yes no I, I will get back to you if i if i get any more information um it's just going to be a photo of you holding that up to your eye yep exactly um so and so so are we going to do like kind of honorable mentions between oh yeah individual we ones can, can or do, do you want to do those afterwards do it, you know what it's up to you do you have one okay. do you have an honorable mention you want to mention around yeah this? yeah um you know jumping back well, not that long ago, to the Black Series, like the first, it's not the first Black Series figure that I own, but it was the first one where I was like, 
okay, this line is interesting. Like they're doing things in this with these sculpts in this line that are looking really good. Like, and it was Finn as a first order stormtrooper in the first order stormtrooper disguise. To my eye, that looked like super accurate, and it was pre photoreal face printing, I believe. But oh, yeah. they had they had the really beautiful scan of John Boyega. You know, it just looked really proportionally super accurate. The helmet with the the you know the the smear of blood on it looked great. Like to me, that was like the first Black Series figure where I was like, this line has a great potential to be like super awesome, and I feel like it's now fulfilling that potential. But that was the first one where I was like. Okay, you have my attention, Black Series. <laughs> did, did you buy it? Oh, of course, yeah. And it's in one of the bins that are piled up that I can see right over here. That I would it would take me hours to search through and find. <laughs> but I don't have him. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have him with me. But I'm sure um, folks can find I- images of 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 that figure. And it, it yeah, it was know. definitely the first of the Black Series where I was like, like, okay, that's cool. Like, I love the character. Love that moment. And it just looked spot on to me. It was, you know, um, just a, I mean, that, a really that great figure. Figure is now eight years old. <laughs> Which, yeah, I think it came out in 2016, according to my research. So that's seven years old. But yeah, I think it was one of the later uh, issues for um, for the Force Awakens line. But, um, yeah, just a really, a really great likeness. Yep. Was that the? But that wasn't the first Black Series that you had bought. No, the first Black Series is actually later on my uh, ah. top five. So, um, but um, it's not number four. I don't think. I think. It, I think I have another for number four, um, which, again, I like for. A, a silly reason which is why it's number four but so the power of the force figure that came out in according to my information in july 97 grand moff tarkin power of the force and the reason and you'd say like what are you talking about phil you don't know anything about star wars figures that's a dumb choice for your number four figure of all time but the reason i'm choosing it is because again very much like Finn as a first order stormtrooper in the Black Series line. It was the first of that line where I was like, okay, like now you have my attention. This line has potential to not just be the overly muscled, you know, weird looking versions of the Star Wars characters that I love. Like it feels like we're heading back in the direction of something that's more representative of what's on screen. And Grandma Tarkin was the first figure, at least for me, where I was like, okay, wow, this line has great potential. And, you know, that's why that one jumped to mind for me. Still a little more buff than... Then, yeah, than the one you saw on screen. Definitely me. not, but, like, compare... <laughs> but not, not the, the ridiculously over-muscled Yeah, that was Luke the one where I felt Han like they were and... starting to turn the corner, starting to, you know, steer away from the super-muscled versions. And um, also steer into characters not done. Prior. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, that was a big part of it, too. It was um, the the line, you know, was starting to have the potential of going deeper, and not just the core characters, um, characters that fans have been wanting forever. Um, so that yeah, no, that's a really good point. Um, but yeah, so in and that were you line, buying I, power of the force two before then when that I was yeah, I, and it um, actually that line started as I was transitioning from New Jersey to Montana, I moved to Montana for kind of a silly reason, but I was there for a few years. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, she bought, she was the one who found them first at Walmart and was like, there's new Star Wars action figures. Like she was like psyched and she knew I'd be psyched. And she like bought me one. And I was like, I could just feel the fever <laughs> like coming back. It's like, <laughs> Oh my God, Star Wars action figures are back. Here we go. And even though they like, I could even then like, you know, of course I immediately recognized that they did not, they were not like screen accurate. And as far as like their builds and stuff, they were, but I, I immediately got what they were trying to do. They were like, you know, making them, you know, more heroic or more whatever, you know, like it just, like I I I, I understand. Like I did not have a major problem with the fact that they were not like super accurate. It wasn't the only figures on the shelf at that time. 
no. that was doing the same thing with their lines. Exactly. Yeah, no, it was definitely kind of the, the style of the times. And, um, and, it, and it was something I immediately... Desert. It had been People don't realize what a desert it was. Yeah. I mean, for Star I, Wars collectibles. Did those like Bendums come out before the... Yeah, the, the Bendums I think were 93, 94. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that was like, you know, the water in the desert, like, yes, Bendums, <laughs> some representation we have, of Star we, Wars. We have books now and we have Bendums. <laughs> exactly. Star Wars is back. <laughs> you were just, yeah, you were literally like the, 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 the cliche, like man crawling through the desert with tattered clothes, just like, the Bendum, yes, the Bendum. <laughs> like you're just so desperate for anything representing Star Wars at that point. It's a Vader. It's a Vader. Did you see? You can get a Vader. Exactly. So, no, that's what really, you know... As soon as the line began, I was back in and collecting. Um, and living in Montana, you know, all we had, I think in Butte, there was just the one Walmart was, there might have been a KB in the mall, but maybe not. I mean, pickings were slim. I would literally drive to another city because <laughs> Montana is <was> Montana, <laughs> like for hours to go hunting for figures. I was collecting some to like spawn figures at the time. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so yeah, I think the nearest we probably drove all the way to Missoula sometimes to go hunting for stuff. And I eventually we eventually moved to Missoula, uh, which is where I saw um the Phantom Menace and collected a lot of figures in the time leading up to that film. But um and this, but yeah, and it, this was the time of you went into a store and you hoped for the best. Yep. It was there a total was no dice roll, sales. no pre orders, no internet sales. Yeah, like it was <laughs> you were just yeah. And, and the way me and my, I went to art school in New York City, and they were all big toy collectors as well. We all, um, I, I, I was in the animation class, the same animation class actually with Chris Pranoski, who started um, Tip Mouse. Yeah, uh, we were in the same animation class together. We're of the same generation, and uh, amongst a, a bunch of other amazing animators and artists. Um, and so, yeah, um, we would call it Toy Safari. You know, and it was literally like the toy hunt, you know, like you go on Toy Safari and you just hit all the stores. And... What year was this? I mean, it's for me that kind of mentality started, I guess, like in like 94 or something. Who knows? But because I was and... I was in uh, I was in New York in 95. Yeah, it was, the, it was like the early that to Toys R Us in Union Square. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Taking that escalator up. Oh my god. Yeah, and we, and it was dangerous when a bunch of us would get together to Toy Safari together. Like if you weren't if it wasn't just like you and your best friend, if it was like a group of you cuz you'd walk through those doors of Toys R Us like feeling like, you know, oh, I'm like charged up, ready to find something, and you'd start walking and walking faster, walking faster and before, you know, like everyone's running for the Star Wars aisle like <laughs> looking to get there or whatever. There's Paris you know. forbid there's only one Yoda. It's, yep. And you know, it was that kind of fever for for me. What um, was the last those... Toy Safari you took? Has the group ever reunited for another toy safari? Not that group per se, but I've definitely been on some toy safaris with Kristen um, um, and other friends I have locally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it still happens from time to time. I mean, less so, of course, with the pandemic and also less so with, you know, the rise of, of Internet pre-orders. It's kind of like less necessary to hit have the Have you done stores. the toy safari at Celebrations? Um... When I'm at Celebration, I'm pretty busy, so I'm lucky if I can even just get to the Celebration <laughs> store, much less hit the aisles, you know? I'm usually working. I'm usually not there for fun. I think the last Celebration I went to just for fun was 2015 in, in Anaheim. Um, I was not working that one, and I was able to just kind of go incognito and enjoy it fully just as a non-employee. Um, and otherwise, I've been the ones I've gone to have just been for, like, I've been on panels or working a little behind the scenes uh, London 2016 I was you know running the slideshow for the creature panel somehow I don't know how I got that job um just weird stuff <laughs> so well, yeah, yeah. we're all getting together we're going on a grand toy safari I'm down let's do it like kind of oh, carve out a day <laughs> yeah oh my god that would be so much fun yeah no the, you know yeah often with I feel like I'm just buzzing so quickly through the the dealer floor like really not getting first one to chance. find a Malakili wins Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun! <laughs> <laughs> like a Lucy Malakili, like that would be like a Star, a, Star, awesome. a, a Star Wars toy uh, treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, and I miss those days. I mean, it's I like as an older person, I like the reassurance of knowing you know 
sometimes pre-orders gets, gets, get canceled, but more often than not, you get your toy, you know? It's nice just being able to sit back at home and know that it's on its way. Not have to do the chase. Yeah, but the chase was part of the, it kind of stoked the fire inside you. You know, like every time you went out, you were just like, like, oh, am I going to find that that well, one figure that I'm looking didn't for? Know, because there's yeah. no information network out there that was saying what was going to be in the next wave, what was going to be, what was yeah. in production. You, oh, you just showed up and something was there. I mean, you were lucky if there was a magazine that like would have a checklist in it or something to, you know, detail out like, you know, what's coming or, but it, yeah, for many years, there was nothing like that. Or you just wouldn't even be aware that the magazine existed because you just never saw it. Like there was this like the information was, was just in the episode one cases before that premiere. Nope. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, I was there at midnight at the KB Toys in Missoula, Montana, in the mall there. The one mall. Did they do the um, swimming pool dump? How did they distribute it? What was it their? Was, they were uh, in display bins out front, as I recall, and so it was just kind of like, and a, people a were rummage. just like grabbing, you know, like out of like these kind of round <laughs> bins, like and and you like it just. I mean, of course, you oh, Anakin Skywalker, I know who that is, but you know, there were other characters where I was like, huh, okay, you know, like you just is is this character going to be good or not or is this character important like who what you know you just have the vaguest sense of of what you were getting and um and i may not have gotten everything that night knowing that more was going to be available later but i definitely got a bunch that night and it was just super exciting it was at midnight you know uh, do you still so, have those oh for sure yeah th that's when i really started holding on to stuff and doing my put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in a plastic bin. I started doing that in the late <laughs> 90s. So I still have all that stuff. But I, I do have some things to show that are on my list that I've since rebought and are uh, have carded. So I'll show you those in a little bit. So your but, number um, four, we should remind it was, it was Grand Moff Tarkin. From the Grand Power Moff Tarkin. Two line. Yep. Um, which, again, everyone's going to probably little, get real, ma real little... mad at me for my weird choices. But, you know, who is getting mad at you? Who, is, I don't who know. are these people that are getting mad at your personal choices? Aficionados, of your... you know, people who 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 think that I'm crazy for my You can say Kristen. Here. She's judging your list. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens regardless. <laughs> um, yeah, I, you know, she knows how I am. She knows she she knows what I'm the weird things that I'm buying perpetually. So so do you want to go to your number three or do you want to do you have a another honorable um, mention you want to throw in? yeah let's do an honorable mention um since we're yeah i think yeah the, the last one we mentioned yeah was was um grandma tarkin so let's jump into another uh, honorable mention weirdo here um so one that <laughs> one that i i definitely um jumped to mind immediately even though it's not in my top five when i was thinking about you know um interesting characters um figures that you know like i said immediately leap to mind uh one was from 1985 and it is a man a man um a man a man was one of those latter day you know uh kenner 17 yep and where i was just like i have no idea who this is i don't remember seeing him in the film <laughs> He's totally weird looking, but like really cool. And it, it, I think it's especially that staff with the skulls on it that he came with. Like, I was just like, what and he was in big. the world? Yeah, huge compared to, you know, the average three and three quarter fig at the time. So I was just like, who is this weird? <laughs> like, how did this become a figure? Like, you look like you should be hanging out with your Masters of the Universe figures. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a, a deep background character because like most of the you know, you would have to watch Return of the Jedi many times, especially at that era, to kind of catch a lot of the... And how many scenes was he cropped out of just for pan and skin? Like oh, my God. Yeah, no, that's that a... He would have been in frame. That's a really good point that, yeah. I mean, right. he was you, one of the you ones that Dengar was... know Dengar was in nope. Return of the Jedi if you'd just seen pan and skin. That's a really good point, especially that one shot kind of facing the, the throne kind of on the side and, like, you see the back of Dengar's head, you know, that one... Yeah, yeah. just... I think it's maybe no, Ula no filing clue. into the pit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you would never know that Dengar was there, and he's absolutely there. And when you know where to look for him, you meet your eyes immediately go to Dengar. It's like, oh, there's Dengar. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Man Man, for whatever reason, I think it's just the design's so strange, and he's so big, and it's such a weird choice for a figure back in 1985 that when I was thinking about figures that you know mean a lot to me or just are interesting or ones that jump to mind, that that one jumped to mind. And so yeah, Man Man. Do you He's have my... that vintage Amanda Man? 
N no, but uh, my niece and nephew might very well have him in their <laughs> giant. So you had it as of... a child. Yes. Yeah, it was definitely one that I had as a child. And I could, and you know, I think my passion for that three and three quarter Kenner line of Star Wars action figures just grew over time. And and then they, they kind of like just cut us all off in 1985. Like, no more. <laughs> the door slammed shut on all of us. Um, because yeah, I but was the like sales. Oh, geez, the sales. Well, yeah, again, like most of my stuff was being bought by my parents, but I definitely was like begging, borrowing, stealing, giving change out of the cushions and the couch or whatever to try and scrape up enough for for some more Star Wars figures. And when yeah, they, when they went into liquidation on mm -hmm. clearing that line out, I mean, it was yeah. like one and two dollar figures. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I, so I was like, yeah, just getting whatever I could find. Stacking um, up those power of the force coins. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, a man of man is definitely one that I just I, and I've always loved the weird aliens and the weird droids and still do. Um, where did, the where does he the rank on your list of your favorite weird aliens and droids? Oh gosh. Probably not, I mean not super high, but for I think it's because he's such a deep cut for that time. Um, because there's like, you know. There's been even weirder, deeper cuts, <laughs> you know, in more recent lines <laughs> of figures. But a man of man, for whatever reason, was one that they chose to make a, a you know, a figure of in, in 85. So that one really kind of jumps to mind because it's, you know, um, you know, a character that's for some reason <laughs> been made, you know, over time and, and several times um, of the glove shadows. He's one of the more prominent ones just because, you know, he's was one of the I wouldn't say he's one of the first ones, but he's definitely. A notable one from that time. I think um, we've only gotten him once more since then. No, yeah, you might be right. In um, that, uh, was it the Power of the Jedi line? Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, and never since. Yep. Well, well the, I don't the think skulls actually... are even worse in that <laughs> in that second release. Yeah, and, and I can't imagine people are busting down the door of <laughs> as we're demanding. We need a man, a man. You know, it's not a. You say that, but again, <laughs> there there are a certain segment of fans, mm -hmm. generally of a a certain generation, who yep. want to see the complete re-release of that that classic line of '96 mm -hmm. Star Wars figures with modern yep. tooling and and design work. Yep. So no, they very much want. <laughs> A modern amount of man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a yeah. I mean, he's pretty much effectively just a banana slug with a with a staff it was, of skulls it was on a, it. Those last seventeen are just a weird. <laughs> you get that. You got the imperial dignitary. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a that's a really great deep cut as well. Um, which is a, which is so they released him. And then I think in the Attack of the Clones era line, with mm. the Saga line, they released the other two dignitaries from those scenes, mm -hmm. but not a modern version of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, you know, I've got no, no, yeah. Can't explain the choices sometimes being made, but, you know, glad that they're, that they go as deep as they do. And yeah. It's... So who is your favorite creature? Who's, who's tops of your creature list? You know, it's it's one that I actually brought up the other day just as a point of conversation because um, the Black Series is doing a Doc Ondar uh, figure, finally. They're kind of finally doing an Ithorian in Black Series, uh, which is something I've been kind of craving. Those, like, original Cantina aliens at that scale, you know, with with the, you know, modern, you know... Outside of Amazon and Honda Baba. Exactly. I, I mean, and... Yeah, Moment of Dawn is like right up there with Evazan and Ponda Baba as far as like really want them, especially in that scale. And Doc Ondar, you know, is kind of a good transition to more Ithorians just in general in the Well, Black I mean, series. if you did you see the the breakdown of the sculpt that's underneath those robes? I heard rumor of such, but I have not seen anyone. It, it, it's it's seen. it's his outfit. It's it's my that's awesome. Outfit. Yeah, so it, it clearly was intended to be multi purpose. That's great. That's really. So Good now you year. know the clock's ticking. Soon your wishes <laughs> it's will only be a matter of time. Yep. Well, will he make it onto the desk or he'll be in the bin? Hmm. No, he'd probably make it onto the desk. I mean, I honestly don't have a ton of, I try to keep my desk relatively clutter free and it's a pretty big desk. But um, there's more toys like on the shelves. I mean, you can kind of see some of the Funkos and stuff behind me and um, statues and things. Um, but yeah, the desk is kind of, yeah, not, not, loading it up with 
tons of black series. Like I said, most of them unfortunately are sadly. But he won't be consigned to the bin. Not passing judgment, but I did say I, he, he won't yeah. be consigned to the bin. <laughs> no, I don't think he would. No, he's he's a pretty special character and such a weird design. Really love Ithorians just in general. Pose with so a he, drink. Excuse me. We pose him with a drink. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was actually just noticing they yeah they recently reissued on the vintage card the Bib Fortuna with like a little less of the blue paint on his head and stuff, and I picked that up. Um, and he comes with like three <laughs> cups for some particular <laughs> reason. This is like he's drinking a lot, I guess. Well, that's like, what the deleted scene was. It was Tim having the drinking contest with Salacious Crumb, right? Just right, right, right. And he's like, I, I remember seeing that scene again recently in the music video that apparently they cut together of uh, Lafayette. Oh, you hadn't, you hadn't seen that? I, I posted if the, I hadn't uh... seen it, it's been, it had been a really, really long time. So it was just cool to see that again. And it reminded me of the, of Salacious Crumb taking a drink and then like coughing, like sputtering. Like... <laughs> And just how bizarre that whole sequence is and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's really funny that they chose to give Bib Fortuna three cups, you know, as his accessories. Um, well, now you have a moment they don't cup. Yep, exactly. Go. Yep. No, I'm I'm psyched for a future moment of dawn for sure. Um, and where were we? Where were we on number three? We just did three, right? And an, an honorable mention. And we did an honorable mention. Yeah. Okay. Right. We did. Right. No. You know, what we went to it? three from the honorable mention between four and three. Right. So do you have another honorable mention? I have a million honorable mentions. Hey, we'll hey, go through uh, as many of them as you want. Yeah. Um. Actually, can I classify an entire line as an honorable mention? I mean, yeah. I'm probably... Because I, I think I... Well, I noticed um, in looking through uh, the videos of this podcast that uh, both the Foosh and uh, Dan Larson have been on previously, and I love watching their stuff been a fan of both of them for quite a while and i know that dan in particular is a fan of this line which i'm going to mention which you might see coming a mile away 2019's galaxy of adventures figures i think that that's one that i really mourn the, the end of and really love the style of those figures really thought they captured the spirit of what titmouse did with those those shorts um and was sad to see that line end and really, really, I'm so glad I collected those as much as I did. And those were ones that I had to kind of go out and find because I think those were kind of, I don't know if pre-orders were available or I just wasn't able to find them as easily as, as other figures. They certainly weren't pushed into yeah. the collector market. At and all. there were exclusives as well. And I think, you know, I wasn't maybe so hip to exclusive pre-orders and stuff or maybe missed out on some. So I remember having to hunt for some of those exclusives as well. Um, and ones in particular that I remember from that line really loving were the Finn from Rise of Skywalker um, and the Ray and Kylo 2 pack from that. Um, and just really loving those representations of those characters in that really cartoony style. The Vader is um, great. Yep. The Han that Solo. Ahsoka is really nice. Yep. Yeah. I, I think as far as stylizations of Vader, that's probably my favorite stylized Vader representation. Yeah, I mean, the something about just the way that flows. Yeah, is just a fantastic figure, and more articulated than um, like the ones that they. What was the line that they sold at the Disney store? Toy box. Um, yeah, the toy box ones. Which I like were, which were loosely based on the Infinity designs. Like they weren't yep. quite as as and I, refined I, as the Disney, uh, the Infinity ones. And I really did. I admired the Infinity figures kind of from afar, but were afraid to like go there because <laughs> it's like <laughs> such a deep, you know, so many, so many like things to collect and money to spend on. Infinity. And that's the point. That's what they. I'm trying to get this. That Vader is in front of me. There we go. There's the Galaxy yeah. Adventures. If no one's seen it, it's just something about the way, like the the way the the cape drapes. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, it's a really it's a cartoony representation, but but a cool cartoony representation and not like super deformed where he's like real tiny with a giant head or anything. Yeah, the like proportions that. are really nice. Yeah. And um and obviously and also, Dan and, loves his Boba Fett. Dan yes. Boba, so. Absolutely. Um <laughs> and and scale wise, they're five inch or something. They're like a weird in between size, I think. Yeah. I think um, they're which is kind of cool because it just makes them kind of like there's a yeah series so they are kind of like five inch which is like 
interesting in the sense that like they only kind of scale with themselves you know they're very like <laughs> insular line of figures uh, which is um, why it's a shame there weren't more yeah go deeper because yeah. they were good solid nice acceptable price point too mm -hmm. it's nice to have something in sort of a 10 inch because it was more limited articulation than a black series yeah or a vintage collection yep they weren't doing oh yeah sorry no I, yeah i was saying five inch and i was thinking 10 inch but you're totally right yeah that they're yeah just this kind of nice in between size um and yeah and and a cool representation of figures that i think in some cases for the time you know um kind of pre again like when did photo real start to really kick in for the black series um 2018 yeah so it was kind of already kind of happening by then but i don't know i just love the, the ray from last jedi i think was one of the right first yeah yeah, yeah. um but i just love those representations of those characters and just getting kind of another line to jump in with like kind of like the greatest hits characters with again. Oh, the Chewbacca um, is great too. Yeah. Yep. So they're yeah. Fun. They're they're a fun line. Yeah. And probably more kid focused and trying to target younger kids, but that never stopped me from watching or collecting anything. I mean, like if I'm, it's I'm aesthetically all it. great. Exactly. If it works, it works, you know, even if it's not exactly targeted to my generation or or people who want things more so realistic. So deserve an honorable mention. I think so. Um, and a, a bit of a cheat. <laughs> it's like the entire <laughs> line gets another little mention. Well, get ready because there's going to be more cheats coming up. I think actually, mm, as I look at what's remaining, no, I think I think my next cheat, well, my next one is not a cheat, but a, but a cheat is coming, so, so be prepared. But anyway, so um, my number three, again, it's more it's for again for a very specific reason but the first black series that i bought that really kind of caught my eye and made me really see the potential for that line was the prototype boba fett which i think was a walgreens exclusive um was or maybe walgreens it was or target yeah um I don't, I think it was amazon i think it was an amazon exclusive yeah it, so it was the all white one which is actually kind of represented by that helmet behind me on, on my shelf but um, and I think it was from 2014, and I think it was issued maybe a couple times. Um, but that was one of the first ones. In, you know, that was the first black series that I owned. Um, and I tend to, because of my love of you know Macquarie and behind the scenes stuff, um, I tend to collect a lot of that stuff. You know, the Funkos that represent concept art. Um, concept art stuff is always hard for me to resist. You and own so all of the 30th anniversary line Macquarie figures. I do, yeah, for sure, and yeah, anything Macquarie, including and... Macquarie. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, So>. exactly, <laughs> Macquarie himself. Um, and yeah, and one of the things I have on my desk are some of these, um, you know, concept art um, vehicles. Oh, bring them! Um, was that the uh, uh, was it the Action Fleet? Yes, and like this one is is you know was made for Solo because it was supposed to have you have a more prominent role in Solo, and then showed up in um and this one's you know obviously uh not macquarie but like um yeah a lot of these kind of prototype vehicles was that joe johnston design um i believe these were oh man i'm totally blanking um I remember what uh because i know i own one of those uh he did the imperial shuttlecraft right it was one of yeah those. um now i need to look it up so you might want to cut this part out. <laughs> um, no, people need to see the process. They need. Yeah. To see <laughs> oh my God. It's just been a, too long a week already, but um, yeah. So um, anything that's a prototype, anything that's like concept art. Um, It'd be nice to see, you know, putting it out into. Um, oh, it's a Colin Cantwell, of course. Yeah. Cause this was the Cantwell class, you know, cruiser. Um, so yeah, it's Colin Cantwell who uh, sadly recently passed away. But these are all representative of his, you know, here's the the Luke's Landspeeder, the Colin Cantwell version. Um, I'd so, love yeah, to, this... I'd love to see a book that collected all of the non Macquarie. Yeah. Designs no, I... from across the franchise. That would be awesome. Yeah. No, I Macquarie be totally got that beautiful that. celebration. If anyone has seen that multi volume 
yep. uh, Macquarie collection that came out. Yeah, I was yeah I was lucky enough to receive uh, a couple of those <laughs> just gratis from the company, and yeah, it's it's an amazing book, an amazing and very um, heavy. Yes, very heavy. <laughs> yeah, thankfully internally we 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 end up with PDF versions of a lot of these books so it's easier for us to kind of flip through them virtually it versus is not in physically like <laughs> you know, it's putting it on a shelf, you know. Yeah, what's well, um, finding a, a desk sturdy enough first? <laughs> exactly, it's going to break your furniture. Um is there any is there any piece of art uh that you know exists that you've never seen published before? Actually, well, I discovered a piece of art in our archive that ended up being published in the Art of Solo, which caused a bit of a stir once it finally showed up. It was like a photograph of Joe Johnston sketching a version of the Millennium Falcon before it became the version that we know. And apparently that piece of art had been coveted by people who go really deep into their knowledge of the Millennium Falcon and the development of it. And it was this kind of in between between, you know, because originally the Millennium Falcon was what became the blockade runner. And that was considered like the pirate ship before it was called the Millennium Falcon. But it resembled too, like they took the cockpit from that and, and put it onto the kind of the hamburger design. But there was always rumor that Joe Johnson had done some in between versions. Um, and I found a photo in our archive, which I just innocently just discovered. Well, not discovered, but it was just sitting there. And um, I shared it with um, one of the um, designers on Solo, James Klein, in our one of our regular meetings. And I just showed it to him. And he's like, whoa, like, what is that? <laughs> like, um, and so then I put, you know, because it became such a point of discussion in talking about the history of the Falcon and kind of like de-evolving the Falcon to, to become Lando's Falcon in Solo, um, that, uh, you know, I, I decided to include it in the art of Solo. And once that book was published, a lot of people were like, whoa, this is like a holy grail piece of art that you've <laughs> published in this book. And I'm like, really? <laughs> like, I just had no idea. I think, you know, there's so but there's definitely the things I'm working on it. Did you find the actual piece as well? No, I did not. But it's there's a possibility, like, who knows how many, but there's a possibility that there's there's pieces of art either in the archive, just existing as physical art that's never been photographed or scanned. Or there's pieces of art that just were never photographed and scanned and are not in the archive and are in someone's personal collection, you know, either, you know, was gifted to a producer, or, you know, that kind of stuff happens. Is, and there, then they is end up... there anything along those lines that you have been told that, you know, exist in lore, something like that, that has not surfaced, unlike that? Um, not particularly. I mean, I'm, there's a pretty good accounting of almost book everything, up. but do you remember what page it was on? Oh, I do my, not, but it's but it, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, the um, it should be in the Millennium Falcon section though, which it, you know it goes kind of like through the movie order, so it should be in there, um, you know, close to Lando and and the Falcon. Um, but um, yeah, so um it's funny to have found a photo of an artist working on a piece as opposed to the piece itself i surely would have included the piece itself if i if that <laughs> had been located but it has not does but i can joe only assume that, that joe excuse me does joe have memory of it yes um and i think there's actually a really good website i'm forgetting is it called kitbashed that um someone who knows way more about the design process for the falcon than i put together um, this really great website that kind of chronicles all of this stuff. And yeah, when he found, when he saw the, that photograph in the art of solo, he flipped out cause he was like, Oh my God, this is the, the, it's like, you know, when you're trying to do the lineage of like prehistoric man and you find the, the, the one in between, you know, <laughs> um, it's really the one in between. Oh, there uh, it is. I was looking for him. I didn't realize it was just. Just hand. a hand. Yeah. Just the hand. Actually, we cropped in on the photo to get a to show the art a little bit better, but the original oh, so photo you can see, yeah, you can see like kind of the the side of his head um, in the original photo, and we cropped in a bit so that you could see the image a little more clearly. So it's a more sort of triangular. Yeah, it actually quite resembles shape. the the ghost a little bit in its shape there. Um, so it is kind of it's you know obviously like the centered cockpit and the big you know engine cluster in the back so it's very much like an not quite the falcon not quite the blockade runner slash and you know, clearly the inspiration for where the lines of 
Lando's version would go. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, when I showed that to James Klein, he flipped out. And then when it ended up in the book, a whole bunch of fans flipped out. So <laughs> that was a pretty cool <laughs> find. I mean, there's, you know, so it's your belief there's much more stuff like that that exists just in the. I would say much more, but probably some, you know, who's didn't know how much. But I mean, definitely for like the more recent projects, you know, in each art book, there's, you know, whatever, several hundred pieces, but there's literally tens of thousands of pieces of art that are generated. And a lot of it's just iterative. Like there's probably like, you know, hundreds of one thing where it's just like slight color changes, you know? So a lot of it's, you know, that number is kind of eaten up by that kind of stuff where it's just, you know, with digital art, you can just make tiny changes and create a new version. So there's is tons that, and tons does of that, that make it somehow in some ways harder to curate? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Cause <laughs> there's just so much more to sift through. Like so much of the process for me is just like literally looking in every f- digital folder and at every single piece and just looking for those gems that, you know, um, represent something that is appealing or, or helps to tell the story that I'm telling in the book. So yeah, I mean, it's, and it's heartbreaking because there's just so much great stuff by so many brilliant artists that doesn't make the cut of these books because there's just not enough room. Oh, um, I mean, there's, and I'm the, sure you know that well. Yeah, <laughs> from your, I mean, there, I have folders full of stuff that I'm like, I, I, what, isn't this way digital exists? Can't we do an expanded version <laughs> that doesn't rely on how expensive it would be to print this thing? Yep. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely, that's, that's one of the hardest parts of the process for me is, is, it's not, you know, the searching through that stuff is a joy, but what's not a joy is making those cuts, you know, like, cause there's a lot of heartbreaking cuts that are inevitable in the, in this process. Cause there's just so much great stuff. I mean, it, uh, you know, dealing with the stuff like DuckTales, let's say that had, you know, 50, no, no, 70 some odd episodes. Uh, the storyboards, there's some real beautiful storyboards in there but yeah. there are thousands and thousands of images yeah and you simply can't i would do just a storyboard book yeah no storyboards but is Star yeah. Wars got uh you know beautiful but that isn't even scratching all of the storyboards that exist N- not at all yeah and yeah i'm always trying to squeeze in storyboards things like blueprints things like you know like those things that are part of the art process but really kind of demand their own book because it's just so much of it and only so little of it can stand alongside the concept art in a book that has like a page limit because it has a price point you know because you know like there's all these factors involved in in kind of limiting the space and yeah it's it's so i try to include i always try to remember uh you know those forms of art that you know aren't as you know not they aren't as celebrated but they're just not as you know um well known or maybe you know wouldn't necessarily be featured in a you know an article or whatever about the book or whatever but you know it's such an integral part of the process obviously storyboarding and there's still so much storyboard drawing that that still takes place for especially for the mandalorians amazing storyboard artists and you're also dealing with something unique with the books you've done in that this thing has to go to press generally they come out around the time the film does but it's at a time where things might not they might not want things spoiled yeah so you've had what is essentially in hindsight incomplete books yeah when it comes to capturing the complete art of what was seen on screen yep so how how weird is that to deal with where you know you can not have stuff dealing with luke at the end of the force awakens book because you don't want that can't have that out in the system yep yeah, no, definitely a big thing to consider. The what's been great is that oh, the same for, thing happened in the Mandalorian book. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, there's way there's sneaky ways around it in some cases, and another like there's ways that you can kind of show images from things that are secret without it being exactly the thing. So even if you saw that, you wouldn't know quite what you were looking at. But in other cases, I was able to like for the Last Jedi book and. Uh, the art of the rise of Skywalker, I was able to include a chapter in the beginning of both of those books, which featured the art from that could have been in the previous the book. If it did, yes. So, um, so I had special chapters in the fronts of, of, of those showing kind of that. And is it there anything in rise too. of Skywalker that didn't make it in? 
Well, it's funny you bring that up because that's the one <laughs> downside to that whole plan is that there's, you know, there's, there's not, there wasn't a book after that one that could feature the, you know, for example, the emperor's return. So that's, yeah, I've, I've definitely, um, you know, we need an addendum. Yeah. And, you know, and it's something we've, you know, thought Maybe about a, a little bit. But... Art, art of the sequels kind of thing. Well, I don't know about that, but I mean, definitely something we think about and, and, you know, something I personally have regrets around, but it's just, if you want a book to come out day and date with the film, it's got to go to print like six months before the film comes out. And at that point, you just got to assume that the whole book's going to leak, you know, even right. if, you know, and everyone's being really careful, as careful as they can. But I remember in the days leading up to The Force Awakens, um, The Art of The Force Awakens was arriving in, in bookstores. And people were, booksellers were ripping open the boxes that say, do not open until this date, days before that date. Just to and leak images on the internet. Yeah. And images of Snoke were getting out there prior to the film coming out from the art book. And, you know, so it's something that you have to kind of assume will happen. And you, so you want to be careful about what's at, what ends up in those books. But in order to kind of maximize, you know, the excitement around those films, you want, kind of want the books to be out with the films if you can. And so, yeah. Um, and, but that's what's good about, for example, the Mandalorian books, which have tended to come out a year after the season is out. So those ones are, you know, more complete um, in that regard because there's less secrecy around the content inside the books that they're not coming out day and date with the project itself. So um, how much Plo Koon art did you want to include? It's, I mean, as much as I want to include in there, it's, <laughs> <laughs> he's very well featured. Plo Koon. Yeah, that was such a, yeah. That was super fun to be able to put that stuff in there um, and to, you know, to see that being generated. And and I remember specifically the day, yes, you know, so I was in the art department at the time, you know, now for the last year and a half been with the story group. But um, but when I was at the art department, I remember the day that um, Doug Chang came over and said, OK, guys, so, you know, obviously, I, I know you're <laughs> in Cloak Moon in the but it's not going to be Plo Koon, it's going to be Luke. And we were like, wow, that's crazy. You know, but we we kind of knew. One of you was like, oh, <laughs> Plo, why, why are you going to do that to Plo? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, but, it, you know, we kind of, you know, we had a feeling that, you know, that it might not be Plo. But anyway, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting process with these books. And it's definitely something that you have to, you know, be mindful of. And, you know, I, I go into it with my eyes open, knowing that, like, some things might not be able to be included, um, but we try to put in as much as we can. Um, well, the and thing then, about of course, the Star Wars a... franchise is that, you know, it's hopefully no end in sight. So there's always the potential <laughs> of, Absolutely. of some kind of something coming out for this eventually to get featured in. Yep, totally. It is an archive that has been mined numerous times in the past and mm -hmm. will be mined in the future. Yep. Yeah, no, the stuff's always there. And yeah, and we've been able to put like, well, sometimes um, art that doesn't make the cut for these books will sometimes end up like in articles and sometimes um, end up as exclusives in various places. Oh, yeah. And sometimes they end up in other um, books. Um, so, yeah, so there's a, there's opportunities for some of that stuff that didn't quite make the cut for the book to end up in other places. And some of it already has. Um, so it's not the end all be all, but I, you know, I, I understand as a fan myself that it's kind of a bummer that like not every single piece of concept art will get out there. Um, but it's just, again, like you said, an opportunity as well, you know, for it to eventually find its way out there. Oh, your um, video froze. Oh, there you go. You're back. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me make sure my internet's working fine. I think I'm all right. Am I all right? You're all right now. Okay, cool. Of course, was I knew as soon as I said something, that was when <laughs> it was going to start working again. Yeah, everyone's home and streaming now. There, everyone is starting up and yeah, catching up no. on the TV for the week. <laughs> Probably, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> eight o'clock. Um, but anyway, yeah, should we get back to the list? I think we should. Yeah, um, because we're down to it, right? We're down um, to your top two. Yeah, is it is it a close race between the two? Or I would you say have no. a definitive number one. I have a definitive number one. Uh, and for the next two, I actually have visual visual aids, which is good. Um, 
Well, let's do you have a do you have a, a, a story to tell that leads into your number two, or do you want to re- I, reveal I it do. and then talk? Well, yeah, so you know, as I was deep into collecting in the nineties, um, you know, like a lot of people, I was also um aware of what was happening in publishing at the time. Um both in comic books, you know, starting with the early '90s, Star Wars comics were starting to kind of um, come back and, and tell new stories, and of course, the Thrawn trilogy in the early '90s um, as well, and um, and of course, as the you know the power of the Force kind of line started to grow, you know, some of those characters started to get represented by that line, and during the I think it was during the pandemic or just prior to the pandemic, I. I was just having a wave of nostalgia and thought I would rebuy some of those. So I have them carded because um, the the original ones that I bought in the 90s, of course, like I said, ended up in those Ziploc bags and stored away in a bin. So you didn't save, you don't save cards. Do you save cards now? No, I don't. I, um, as the Fu says, it's just the trash around my my stuff, you know, like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think I may have, you know, like with G.I. Joe, like when they would have like little file cards, I sometimes collected that kind of thing where it's like you cut around a, a shape on the back of the card. And you and so cut would... off your your proof of purchase. Exactly. In the trash. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the way I've always been. Um, but yeah. So my number two, I'm cheating again. It's no judgment. There's no judgment here. <laughs> <laughs> it's three figures from the expanded universe um from dark empire um which i really love that comic um and i especially love these figures and what they kind of represented when they came out in i think they came out in 97 uh, 97 98 yeah um and it's you know princess leia from dark empire as a jedi with a reddish lightsaber yeah and then luke Oh, the collar and the yeah. shoulders. <laughs> yep. I think it was uh was it Tom Veitch did the art for Dark Empire? Or yeah, it's just uh I just really love the style of those comics and I loved how dark and weird they were. And you know, just the idea of you know Luke going kind of dark and it just was and they were just wild stories. And then of course, and the final one being the Clone Emperor Palpatine. Um and just some of my favorite, you know, expanded universe storytelling of that era and the fact that they made figures of these. And these were ones that I displayed very prominently when I was living in Missoula, Montana in the lead up to in open form. Yes. <laughs> um, in the lead well, you up didn't to... keep the 3d play scene, which those were unique for. Um, I so it's so packed I within did. there. Yeah, no, I see them on the a, back. Is, it's a 3d diorama. I don't think I did. I think I just chucked those. Um, and it, I think know, those are the only figures that had those 3D dioramas. What were those? It's funny. I have like no memory ones. of these from when they originally came out, the 3D diorama at all. Like I'm, I'm looking at the back here, and I'm like, oh yeah, like, huh? Like, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Maybe I didn't even. No, I must have. No, I must have back in the day seen these and been like, and and opened them up and been like, oh okay. But maybe they just didn't do it for me or something. Because I remember having these on display without those di- cardboard dioramas. Did you have the Thrawn as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, and and some of the Shadows of the Empire uh, figures as well. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely dipped my toe into that whole world. But those three in particular just made a big impression on me just because it was like kind of beyond you know obviously stories beyond the original trilogy um and even though you know you know what george was leading up to was um, going back in time i just loved that the the idea of like the possibilities of what these characters could be in the future and and especially in that dark empire comic uh do you think for us something about being in figure form sort of legitimized those within the star wars universe for us because well, of how vital the toy the toys were a component of that to a certain extent i think for me more it was just having the physical representation of them next to physical representations like having them be able to literally stand Made next be to, a part of... yeah exactly to have them like on the shelf like to have like you know kid anakin next to hey you know hayden christensen anakin next to you know, original trilogy, Anakin next to, you know what I mean? It's just like, felt, felt like having, a shared universe. 
yeah like just like representing kind of the whole history of the franchise on a shelf you know in in a you know and and you know characters in all their iterations kind of standing shoulder to shoulder was kind of you know why it was special for me you know um it was just interesting to have representations of these potential futures for these beloved original trilogy characters you know represented in figure form standing next to representations of them from live action you know um so which and, of those and being equals you know excuse me so which of those three is your favorite I th- actually leia i'd say just because of the promise of leia as a jedi you know which is something kind of you know to a certain degree hinted at in return of the jedi that's the, the potential for that and then to have it fulfilled in a physical form as an action figure for the first time is just really cool um that she has a you know it's lay with a lightsaber and you still have that in your bin do you have the loose one still yep i do in a bin you don't you don't have lay with a lightsaber on your shelf i do not because it's the only lay with a lightsaber figure we have because they didn't release anything for rise of skywalker ken i live in the bay area (laughs) like our (laughs) rents are outrageous there's only so much room I, I gotta get real listen, here. Listen, listen. Like, she could be in a flying pose, hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Absolutely. I could just get some fishing line. Yeah. You know, have a whole bunch of figures just flying over. Action myself. scene. You know, you make a good point. There's no excuse, but um, of all the ones, but the uniqueness of Leia with a lightsaber. You <laughs> you said it yourself. I know. Well, it's it, you know you're convincing me. I'm I'm sure next time we talk, I'll have a whole display. People will be mad at me it, for it, how it, outrageous it, my it's place is. It's part of the gotten. memorial. The Kristen Baber <laughs> Memorial <laughs> Library has a rotating display. <laughs> I so definitely you... do. I do have some toys. Like for example, like right here on on my next to my TV over there, I have you know this uh, version of the B two emo. Uh, I think That's this the is Disney the Parks. yeah. This is the Disney Parks one, but I have the 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 Black Series one as well that came with Cassian. Um, so there's some around. Just not in the same way, like you, like you see, um, Dan Larson's collection. Day. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's it's, you know, I'm trying to, yeah. I mean, there's, it's funny, like what I have on display are a lot of the the Funkos that are from the concept art, you know, a lot of the Macquarie Funkos, um, and and some random kind of things, um, and like the stuff you see behind me. But um, are there are there any figures that exist only in the the company store they can only get at the ranch there must have been some exclusive at some point that no. must have only been available i mean the only thing that i mean well most recently i don't know if how much you know about lego but um, oh i saw you you got the fountain yes that isn't a, a company exclusive which is i mean there's company exclusive stuff but it's rare that there's a company exclusive toy um like we have I mean, like I have a bottle statues from and... the ranch but I... yeah exactly i mean there's like you know all kinds of you know various things and tchotchkes and things over the years that are exclusive to our stores and exclusive to the ranch exclusive to you know lucasfilm ilm um uh, crew gear obviously but um but as far as like toys go the, it's not like that's... a rick mccullum figure no no and i don't know how rick would have felt about that honestly <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, the same like, way um, George feels about being a stormtrooper. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, it's funny you mention that <laughs> because yeah, I mean, definitely an honorable mention for me is is you know this was one I had to get. It's a bit. I, I gotta admit, it's a bit weird to have action figures both of George, um, and Dave, who I've worked with. You know, like the people that I've worked with, <laughs> I possess little tiny human versions of yeah, them. Yeah, can you imagine form. that 15 years ago when you're you're meeting Dave? Yes. And going, well, you're going to be an action figure one day. Yeah, that would. Yeah, he would have been like, no way, no way. Like he would like, and, and I don't. I'm sure it was John twisting his arm to, for him to appear as John, who's also an action figure. Now. Yes, exactly. I think <laughs> John seems more into the idea of these kinds of things. I think he seemed he seemed really excited about the fact that he became an action figure as well. John also um, in in comments that he has said also seems to enjoy the torture of no day we're gonna put you on camera we're gonna put yep. you in this scene you're gonna and i'm gonna send you a box of the action figures I have <laughs> yes exactly but um but yeah um now if you had an action figure would me? you want would now you know george has been both a pilot 
and a stormtrooper yes. disguise. Yes. Yep. What would you want yours to be? Uh, I'd much rather be a pilot, honestly. I'm definitely on the side of the rebellion. Um, it, I mean, a stormtrooper one's kind of a kind of in some ways a more iconic look, and I can understand why, you know. And stormtrooper armor is just super cool looking. Um, but you know, I think just storytelling wise, I'd rather be in the rebellion than the empire. <laughs> So just on Design that alone. wise, what pilot would you want to be? Mm, I think, you know, just growing up when I did with the first film, it's, you know, it's got to be like a classic X-Wing pilot. I mean, it's just the, the iconic pilot no love, look. No for, love for the B-Wing. No. I mean, no, I've got a lot of love for the B-Wing, you know, A-Wing, Y-Wing. Nope, I mean, they're all great picks, ships. Nobody but... picks B-Wing. Nobody, nobody <laughs> picks A-Wing. Yeah. No, I mean, those are all beautiful designs and, and you know, and obviously all the pilots have, you know, distinct looks and stuff. But, you know, um, yeah, I mean, that classic X-Wing pilot uniform is is just chef's kiss. It's a really beautiful design. What would you want on your helmet? Because that's clearly the big way of personalizing. You know the, yeah, I mean, the big checkerboard is a pretty nice thing. <laughs> like, that's a cool design. I mean, the Rebel Alex symbol, Alex Damon will be happy to, yes. have, to have heard you check that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's just yeah i mean there's there's yeah i mean just the symbols on all the x-wing pilot helmets are that's a whole a rabbit well, this hole is you, you you're down. personal like you know, yeah he's got his I mean, wolf symbology on his and oh that's a good point like something just a, totally original yeah that's Ooh. totally yours that totally Gosh. represents this is your helmet i don't know i can't even i don't i have no idea i can't you i'll have to get back to you on that one because that's yeah I, I just can't even that's no i would never that's not something i've ever <laughs> thought of clearly and, and it's, it's just, you got me completely stumped i just i don't know what it could possibly be i mean it'd be mm, i mean it'd be interesting if there was something kind of representing maybe the force in some way on a on a pilot's uniform you know on, you know especially there on the helmet where you can kind of you know personalize it in some way like but i don't know yeah that's tricky oh mm, maybe like maybe like the bendu or something in, represented in some graphical form on, on a helmet would be cool i don't know yeah anyway well of all the artists that you've curated mm. if you could commission one to do your stylized bendu <laughs> uh, well if, gosh i mean um, I mean, Killian Plunkett would probably be the man for the job since, you know, he's, you know, the, pretty much the lead designer on, on both Clone Wars and, and Rebels. But, uh, uh, you know, you know, I mean, probably be him or I mean, um, Christian Altman would probably do another a, a great design as well, because he's a big creature guy of, of um, you know, the Lucasfilm art department. So uh, We're probably between those two now. guys. <laughs> exactly your putting it out into the universe <laughs> yeah they're watching this right now <laughs> yes if, if christian and, and Killian, if you're out there right now but um <laughs> but yeah no um i mean it's your anniversary year they have question. to celebrate somehow so the gift that is true yeah your personalized uh, x-wing helmet throw me a bone guy <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so uh, yeah i guess that george figure does count as a as a honorable mention um and is yeah that was just fun to see that happening again you know obviously there's been other george figures but yeah i should mention though that 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 yoda fountain lego uh was a um may the fourth star wars day exclusive for employees only and was something officially done by lego for us um which is pretty amazing that like a lego set like an official lego set not just something just thrown together and from loose so pieces. there's so many Lego collectors out there that are just going bonkers knowing that that's... I've heard from a few of them myself <laughs> who are like, please <laughs> tell me what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's it's wild that there's a like a Lucasfilm exclusive um, set, but the cool thing is, I don't... I think maybe the Yoda has some sort of exclusive printing on it, or maybe it's a Yoda that's not quite out yet in any other set. To some degree, the Yoda minifig that's on top of the fountain. Um, I think that is something that's probably highly coveted. But if otherwise, I believe it's comprised of 
pieces that you can just get. And right. if you look at enough photos of this thing, you can figure out how to build it. But you not know? the packaging. That's no, not, not the packaging and not the instruction booklet. I mean, so <laughs> those are things that, you know, you definitely cannot reproduce. A um, collector would want. Yes, indeed. Do you so, have any honorable mentions before your number one? Um... Well, my number one is actually a bit of a cheat as well. I'm just cheating <laughs> left to right and center here. But um, so um, um, yeah. I mean, uh, one other that I want to mention that was kind of ties into my number one. But um, you know, I'm a big like Luke Skywalker is my guy. Like, um, Luke Skywalker was the character that I played as as a kid, whereas my brother would be both uh, would be Han Solo. Um. And Han Solo was like too cool and too sarcastic for me as a like I I like the purity of Luke as a character like his innocence, his, you know, um, that you know he wasn't he there wasn't any world weariness to him or cynicism you know like there is with Han and that's why you love Han you know you love how funny he is you love how you know sarcastic he is, um, and you know obviously he becomes like a romantic hero and um, and all that. But the spiritual journey that Luke's going on and kind of going from this very innocent um, farm boy to this Jedi Knight hero is such an amazing journey. And, and so yeah, Luke, Luke's still my guy and was my guy when I was a kid. He's like my my favorite of those core original trilogy characters and the, the Jedi Knight Luke from 83. Um, and just that representation of the character and the portrayal by Mark Hamill in the film, just, I literally, as a kid in 1983, would hold my hands like this, like Luke did, coming into Jabba's palace, just to be, to try and be as cool as Luke, you know? Like, that representation of that character. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, over my head. Yeah, just like, just he just oozed cool, and, and you know, just had this power, kind of powerful you know feeling about him like he he just felt how he had changed as a character between films and um was just such a great heroic you know character and that that action figure representation of him like quickly superseded like i loved you know the you know bespin luke and you know that jumpsuit that he wears in his final duel with darth vader and stuff and you know obviously is trained in um dagobah that luke you know, and was in the Muppet Show as well, and Mark Hamill's appearance there. I think that was the first appearance of that costume was on the Muppet Show yeah, before as the a, film as came a out. Teaser. Yeah, but um, so that was my my main Luke for the longest time. But then when the cool Jedi Luke with the boots and the black suit and the <laughs> and the in the brown cloak and stuff, I was just like, oh my god, like that's taking Luke to another level, like that a lightsaber and, and a blaster. Yep, I mean it was just a great. A great look in the film and a great figure, and that became my like you know ultimate representation of Luke. Um, but it's got to be that early part, not the flap down final battle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the early one, and and I think that's how he was represented in the Kenner figure in '83. Was how he first appeared the, when he kind Jabba's of arrived at Jabba's palace. Yeah. So, but I love the flap though too. Like that's just the cool. <laughs> it's like I'm in relax mode. It's like you know after dinner I'm going to watch some TV, put the flap down, you know kick back yeah it's a relaxation flap it's yeah exactly you gotta like give yourself a little breathing space in your costume you know in your in your jedi uniform and he's gonna bulk up in time for power of the force too so <laughs> it's true <laughs> it's an expansion flap. it is an expansion flap <laughs> so yeah that was like that was like my uber luke um and that definitely ties into my number one um which i guess i should go to right now um where do you so i have a re yeah i have a representation of my number one and my number one is this is not the number one this is the you know obviously the retro reissue but the original yoda action figure from empire strikes back which i believe came out in 1980 right with the film um which did not stay one. in place in that bubble like that <laughs> no exactly <laughs> no not but i mean you know i'm glad i had this one i'm glad i dig this out of the bin um, and this is the kind of thing that I would keep on the card um, because obviously there's a million loose versions of this guy flying all over the place. And I'm sure mine is Not flying around somewhere. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> um, and 
yeah, just Yoda as a character just meant the world to me. This was the film that hit me like an atomic bomb in 1980 when I was a kid. Um, you know, I love the first film, obviously, but just like the character of Yoda just really took me by surprise without really knowing anything about them, about him going into the film and the way he kind of comes off initially being like, like a trickster, so funny and kind of messing with Luke and, you know, not revealing who he is and having that be a surprise, you know, seeing it for the first time in 1980 with no, you know, foreknowledge of, of what was coming. Um, and just, yeah, just Yoda as a character. Um, and I ended up with two, I mean, part of the reason why he's my number one is I ended up with two Yodas for somehow, Maybe one was a, you know, a, a gift from someone who didn't realize I had one already. So, so you got to have it as opposed to being in the communal pool. Yeah, well, and they became two Yoda species characters in our play. So there were like two <laughs> Yodas living on Dagobah. Both and named was, Yoda? N- no, but, I, you know, for the life of me, I need to talk to my brother because I can't remember what the name we gave the other Yoda was when we were <laughs> playing with them but it was some spin on Yoda, but it was like a younger Yoda. So it was like baby Yoda before baby Yoda. And which one did you play? Uh, we would play with both of them simultaneously and they both were, had responsibilities for training Luke. And so sometimes you characters. would be Yoda. Sometimes you would be the other. Oh, sure. Yeah. And they were just both hanging out. You know, I had the, you didn't like lay claim to Yoda. Like I'm only Yoda. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, very, no, we were very, we were just bouncing you, off of each you, other. Because just... you're very much like Luke. You're... <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I was like, mine, you know, I was very open to sharing the toys, obviously. And, you know, shared them all with my niece and nephew. And uh, they're still over their house, I'm sure, somewhere. But, um, in a box so, yeah, the like, attic, waiting yes, for you to exactly. call. Yep. But yeah, we had, I remember very clearly that we had two of those original Yodas. And, um, you know, they became two different, completely different characters, which was fun and, and strange. <laughs> like we were writing our own stories just by the fact that we ended up with two Yodas. Um, Is he so, a character yeah. that remains hard for you to resist picking up if you run across a, well, a Yoda? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a huge collector of this line, but when I, this was coming out, like I, I knew I, I got this and I got the Boba Fett uh, retro. Um, those were two ones that I could not resist picking up. This is not a lot, you know, I don't tend to collect a lot of the retros, even in other lines like G.I. Joe or um, Indiana Jones, like the short round that you showed earlier. Right. They're, they're not things that I tend to collect, but um, Yoda I had to get and Boba Fett I had to get and I kept them on the card. So like they obviously have like that kind of special meaning. Um, and yeah, and part of the cheat is that <laughs> is that uh, when they issued um, this Yoda black series yoda in the two pack with luke like like Kristen will defend to death the original black series yoda as being like a, a like a good yoda and i was always like mm, not quite it's like out of scale <laughs> the likeness isn't so great and then when they finally issued this one you know i was like okay like they've they've done it this is and and there's a connection but, between but she still hasn't conceded your point no, no. Well, <laughs> maybe a little bit. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think she's she definitely recognizes that the scale's a bit better on this one for sure. But and the she's not as head she's is great. I mean, I have it right in front of me. The yep. I mean, that's a great Yoda sculpt. That yeah. meditative head. Yeah, just in general, and and I think they're using the same Yoda for the Four Spirits pack that's coming out uh, later. Um, and it's yeah, it's a it's a really beautiful sculpt. It's definitely much more uh, in scale with the rest of the line. Um, and... Well, it, it doesn't try and it, that first release is trying to sort of run a middle ground of being prequel and yep. OT. I totally agree. Yeah, and it doesn't and... quite work either way. <laughs> no, it does not. Um, and and yeah and and for the early black series it was definitely a cool representation of that character but um you know i'm i guess i'm more picky than Kristen in that particular way like i and especially for yoda you know like just yoda is an important character to me so you also have issues with the scale on the r2d2 as well 
yes although that is being you know, rectified yes uh, you know I, I loved seeing that video show and i mean and in so many ways just like that the head comes up and you can put the 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 little arms and I stuff wish the inside hot and... that i just got had that storage for yeah all the things that come with it no it's like they're doing they're not only rectifying the scale issues they're 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 making it like just a really great and practical figure for you know um you know obviously i think the first one that they're doing is is it r2 or is r5 d4 first i think the r2 comes out first doesn't it yeah that would make sense that it would, yeah it's probably is it is it for the 40th or... i think i think they are delaying the r5 because mm. they're going to fix the red on his back panels right 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 right. i remember hearing about that <laughs> but um yeah um but by the way like even though i'm a lucasfilm employee like i'm out there w with you know i'm not receiving these things as like gifts or whatever or for just for free i mean i obviously got the the yoda fountain lego set uh as part of our you know lucasfilm celebration of may the 4th but but yeah like i'm making pre-orders like today just today earlier today i, I also clicked the uh, G.I. Joe classified and I placed some pre-orders for the stuff that came out today. The Trouble Bubble uh came out as a Hasbro Pulse exclusive. Um so I'm out there with the rest of y'all. Well they haven't announced the the standard Cobra Commander yet, right? No, um, not yet. But you know, it's again with pipeline reveals and stuff, like it's like really hard to remember <laughs> like oh, what's the, coming and when and all the all the Indiana Jones stuff starting to hit all at once. Yep. Didn't yeah and that it, to happen <laughs> but it's a bounty of riches like it's hard to complain because it's just it's like a i consider this time to be like just like the golden age of action figures like it's really amazing everything that's being produced at such a high quality um like and i and i'm not saying that as an employee i'm just saying that as a fan you know this like it's just a really great time to be a toy collector it's really a bounty of riches you just i mean i remember looking so recently, um, Dan Larson's been reissuing some of his older videos uh, from when he did mostly toy reviews on um, Toy Galaxy. And and I remember watching them back in like whatever, 2015, and just being like, like, look at how amazing that Spider-Man figure is, you know, just and that but you look at it now in the light of everything that's happened since then. Oh and you're gosh, like, it has pins. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Pins or <laughs> I mean or or the no deco, butterfly you know? joints or <laughs> exactly no photo reel on that character i know and we're just so spoiled now and and i'm sure that they'll just get better and better and they do get better and better um i mean what they've been doing in the classified line has been bonkers sometimes i just hold a classified figure and i'm just like this is freaking amazing for especially for you know like hot what hot toys does is just on another level you know but for the price point for it the photo being kind of a, a revelation yeah, it's it just totally changed the game, um, especially in in the larger scale figure where that is more noticeable. You know, I think like a six inch figure, um, it just yeah. Once the once the black series went to photo real, I was just like, I you know, I rebought the entire uh, line of uh, uh, the Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah. Oh, I mean, re rebought the rebels from rebels. Finally, like... you can feel good about having that that gin and Cassian. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, such great characters, and it's so great to finally have them represented as, as only well Krennic as they possibly. had also gotten. That's a really a good point. Yeah, no, that's interesting, huh? But they I mean, went, and we finally so got close, <laughs> and we finally got Bodhi as well, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, and as you said, worth... I mean, even the stuff like that they've been recently released, like redoing that Bib Fortuna, and yep. I'm curious. I haven't seen the Emperor yet. I'm wondering because mine has a very noticeable sort of uh, uh, blue nose mm. on his. Right. That's you know almost you know snow miser level <laughs> of blue nose, and I'm wondering if that's toned down for the carded release. I would have, yeah, I would imagine so. They've been definitely doing those tweaks, um, and I have no insight into you know. I think I remember hearing recently that they're, you know there's different factories i don't know what's going on with all that stuff but um they definitely will make those tweaks on the fly and, and you know the, the new bib i think um it just looks great i remember that's another one just recently i like opened that up i was just holding it and just being like this is freaking incredible <laughs> this this sculpt this like the poses you can get it into even with it's like you know it having the you know as fush will say like the hard candy shell you know like it's a bit limiting for articulation but he's not like an 
an action character. He's he's just holding a drink and gesturing and introducing people. You know, as he you know. Yeah, but he could throw that drink. It's true. Yeah, and he can throw it three times. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> he's got three. He's got two spares. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, they're just really beautiful things. Um, and it's I amazing. was just what about to think? ask a question, and then I realized that I can't ask that question because it would be well, a spoiler. We'll oh. follow up. We'll follow. Why well, it it might be. I don't want to give any clues to anyone. Okay. Yeah. No. And but you know, uh, but you know what? I will. I will say. I will ask you off air. Okay. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Now everyone's gonna wonder what I was gonna ask. <laughs> yeah. And they're not gonna know. Well, but and it may not be something I'm able to answer. So we'll we'll see. I will say that when your story comes out, oh, you can answer for everyone. I see where you're going. Yes. So um, when is the release date for? It's uh, uh, September. From a certain point of view, you actually got bumped up a, a week in like the positive direction. It's coming out a week earlier than originally scheduled, so it's late August now. Oh, nice. Um, and that really rarely happens when you know sometimes things get delayed the other direction, and you have to wait a little while for a book to come out. But this one's actually coming out a week early. So you need to uh, have a uh, premiere party at what, Dragon Con? Is that the convention that's <laughs> happening around that time? Yeah, actually, that's an interesting point. Yeah, Labor yeah. Day weekend is Dragon Con. You should do a big. That would be fun, I and mean, then you and then you can do the, toy safari. <laughs> it, it all's coming together. <laughs> all points are converging. Who else? Who else? Who that you, is going to have stories? Obviously, Kristen's in the toy safari. Kristen needs to come out. Who Who else needs to be in that certain point of view group? Oh my gosh! I think well, Adam Christopher is doing one. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just an amazing. It's bizarre. Both me and Kristen are definitely pinching ourselves in having this amazing opportunity to be a part of such an amazing series with incredible authors we're just like like the little kids like hey can we write a story too you know <laughs> like like i just don't feel worthy <laughs> you know especially in the world of fiction you know like i you know obviously i've done my fair share of art books and and written a lot of this is something that could be canon sure and well and the cool thing is is that you know as with the previous from a certain point of view books the characters will be revealed prior to the book coming out. So um, all of our characters will be known uh, before too, too long in the future, certainly before the release date of the book. So that'll be fun. That'll be a fun thing to talk about online. And I'll be able to reveal <laughs> the the versions of the character that I have represented all over my place that I have not been able to express <laughs> out of fear that people are going to figure <laughs> out. Exactly well, so, well, that, that, well, I mean, that's my question. So, obviously, you have versions of the characters. So, you, yeah, yeah, no, and I can. Uh, definitely my question see that, was just going to be: that's, will, that's not... will you have the ability to put your character or thing or whatever you've written about on, <laughs> yes. on the shelf behind you for all future Zoom calls after the book comes <laughs> out, so everyone knows? You know, yeah. I mean, I think I, I feel comfortable saying yes, considering how deep throughout the entire history of. Star yeah, so Wars the, so the 2000s have probably got you covered. When, when <laughs> exactly. <it comes. laughs> There's probably very few characters in the in the Return of the Jedi that have not been represented in some form. It's about so, one of the skulls on a man of man's staff. <laughs> how did you guess? Oh no. <laughs> and how could you reveal that? I'm on the... sorry. Yes. Well, go never, to eBay. Never Time back. to get them. <laughs> Snap them up. <laughs> exactly. A man of man's going to skyrocket in value. Um, Just the staff, though. It has to be <laughs> yeah. complete. That would be funny if it if my, the character, you know, it could be the, the character that I'm writing about is someone that I've talked about extensively today. You never know, you know. We'll know we'll, soon enough. Yeah, we will know. Soon Meanwhile, enough. Chris is just able to talk left and right about Size Noodles is her character, which is a great character, um, and her story is great. You know, like us being friends as we are, um, and I've known Kristen since she jumped on board at Lucasfilm. Um, you know, I've I've gotten a chance to read her story, um, and and it's really awesome and it's very worthy. Sai has been released in figure form. Wow, for yeah, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, we need a, a new. I mean, version. yeah, we've only gotten two versions because the that second Power of the Force two version was just yep. re-released as that Walmart set. Mm, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So we've all, we've only ever gotten the original Kenner and. And that mod modern is thirty years old. Yeah, and that's more representing um, the special edition version, obviously, because he came in a two pack with Joe Yauza, I think, or was yes. it 
she yeah. came she came with Joe Yauza. Mm-hmm. And then uh Max came with uh who's the Rodian? Oh uh mm, gosh. Uh oh is it Bo oh, oh, Bo he's got that oh, it's like yes. on the tip of my tongue. Yes. It's like Yeah, he came well, he came with the Rodian. <laughs> yes. And, the Rodian. And, and then uh uh Droopy came with who did Droopy come with? Actually I have uh, yeah, I did some of the research for the podcast today in uh, Steve Sansweet's action figure archive. So I have, to, I have the book right here. And then Rapper Tooney came on his own card mm. separate. Later, later, did not come out with the Power of the Force 2. He didn't come out huh. until. Because the dancers, oh, the so it was... dancers also came out with the Power of the Force 2 around that time. Yeah, what I was struggling to articulate is Dota. Bodon Awido is the Rodian. <laughs> so no wonder I was having trouble coming up with that. It's a it's a tricky name. And Drippy came with uh, Barkwin Dan. Okay. Um who yeah, again, another um special edition addition. I mean to we've got the entire the band Rebo now band. released. Yeah, the drummers. We got both um, the drummers, mm -hmm. one in the 30th anniversary and one, I think, in the legacy collection later. Right. With each with one half of the drum, so you could put it together. Yeah, uh, and then uh, <laughs> I love how they would do that. It's like early version of like build a figure or whatever. It's just like build a drum. I mean, some of the I was opening on the open chat week before last, last one, last one with Molly Damon. Uh, mm -hmm. We opened the Cantina figures from the Saga collection that came with the sections. Yes, of the cantina of bar. the cantina, yeah, and the cardboard backdrop of uh, uh, the uh, why am I forgetting his name? Bartender, um, Wur Wur Wooher, yeah, yeah, uh, just an angry Wooher picture <laughs> that you yes. can cut out and put behind <laughs> your cantina. That's so funny, uh, but yeah, I mean, some of the some of the accessories were just bonkers how big some of those accessories were in that line, yeah. And they recently did something similar with the cantina, right? They, 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 you, you got a section of it of the cantina bar with, with the black series. Yeah. That was and with you, the Obi Wan and Panda and Evazel. Yep. Which, which was a version of that original three pack from the Power of the Force line. Um, but you, if you bought, which didn't come with a section of the cantina. No, nah, I think it was just the cardboard. Just the floor of the, the cantina yeah. for them to stand on. Yep. And uh, but if you bought multiples of that Black Series set, you could make assemble the whole assemble the bar. Yeah, I mean, it was also a convention exclusive and super expensive. So yeah, <laughs> they weren't making it easy <laughs> on us. And yeah, and they have not done an Obi Wan release. No, the only other one they did was in the Kenner coloration. Right. So we've never got a standalone. They did that. And they did the Ghost version. Right. Wow. So that that set is the only way to get a, a black series a proper Obi -Wan. Yeah. Obi Wan, classic Obi Wan. Wow, that's true. And I still the case. I was yeah. just thinking of that Power of the Force too. Speaking of unique stuff like that, that expanded Empire, uh, expanded universe stuff uh, was mm -hmm. that uh, that was the last time we'll ever get a Sebastian Shaw mannequin. Yeah. No, I, in looking through the book and doing the research uh, for for our discussion today, like. You know, looking at the old Sebastian Shaw Anakin figures was definitely bringing me back as well. Because, you know, it, it, it must be hard for some fans to fathom that that was Anakin for us, you know, for so long. Like, that was the only Anakin we knew, you know? I mean, uh, right until... up until, was it 2010? When was the... Because it was the home video release. Right. Was it the Blu-ray release? 2011, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of of Return when, of the Jedi, it, he was yeah, the, the as, spirits, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that was just putting. So he made it all the way till then. Yep. Oh no, yeah. I take that back. It must have been before then, because the 30th anniversary line has the first appearance of the Anakin Force Ghost. Right. So it must have. Yeah, been... Yeah, I'm. Yeah, as far as the 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 tiny iterations and changes made to each individual home video release goes, is something I have like no expertise in because it is so <laughs> there's so many changes, it is crazy like how there's and a lot of them are really subtle, um, but yeah, um, 
that yeah well there, right. there Shaw, are larger the delightful spot pedants for... than me that have kept track of every <laughs> yeah. bit of minutia i gotta say though that every time i've seen return of the jedi including last year at the usc um star wars fan club um in, in their theater at usc which was a really beautiful little theater um and I've heard this from other people who saw recently saw Return of the Jedi again in theaters that when they see Hayden Christensen as the Force Ghost at the end, yeah, like it cheer. always people cheer, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it does the really bring that it. I was in. Yep, that it was for me the biggest circle. sign of the gener yes of the generational yep. change. It's not was. only a generational change; it also really puts a beautiful bow on those six films. You know, like it really connects to the prequels in a way, in a more direct way than just seeing you know Naboo or and then seeing Coruscant at the end you know those are really cool nods but but showing an actor from those other films suddenly standing next to you know uh, Alec Guinness is is kind of wild and such a, a it's a It'll bold choice that in moments it. has got to be I didn't know that was an option what do we yeah <laughs> yeah no, and he just and... appears with the mullet after that <laughs> It, but it's, but it's, it's just Alec Guinness with the mullet hair. <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really meaningful moment, though, for especially for the people, you know, the prequel generation. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's a special thing. And, I you know, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk, too, about the original versions of Return of the Jedi versus the special edition versions, which are the ones that are, you know, uh, shown in theaters and stuff. And um, and. You know, of course, when you're you're used to one version and then there's something new and it, there's a change, you it kind of rubs you the wrong way, a fair sure, or at least surprises you. But um, I got to say that like victory celebration as a song and as a moment has so grown on me over the years. And I love the Ewoks and I love Yub 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 Nub and you know that whole party vibe at the end of the original version of Return of the Jedi. But there's something kind of like really um special about victory celebration and seeing the galaxy celebrating together and also just the hint of of there's like a little bit of sadness in victory celebration that's not present in ewok celebration um just like a, a bit of like wistfulness you know uh, uh, you know and it kind of makes you think of the people that they, that were lost including anakin um and it's so it's yeah it's 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 a really special part of the film and i think it ends return of the jedi in a more honest note than just like yeah party you know like and i understand the impulse to just party with the ewoks and and have some fun at the end and and as a kid i really loved ewok celebration um and listened to that endlessly on vinyl <laughs> <laughs> but uh but victory celebration like i'm saying it just it, it's it's such a beautiful musical moment and a beautiful well it incorporates uh, the galactic moment view like it, it 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 follows through on what the prequels did expanding what sure. the what the field of of what where this stuff was taking place yeah absolutely and yeah and, it, and it's it's it kind of adds a different emotional tone and note to the end of the film and the end of 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 you know those three films so yeah it's and where do you stand on jedi rocks <laughs> I'm not a fan. Let's just say I'm not a fan. Um, very much strongly prefer. So you're not a fan. Was it Joe Yelza, the DJ Khaled? Uh, um, Jabba's Palace. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know, especially in the light of Kristen's <laughs> size noodle story and stuff, I feel like Joe Yelza just kind of took over somehow. <laughs> he was just like, "I'm taking over the band." Just want to um, raise it. Exactly. <laughs> Much love to Cy. Um, the I, mean, I love that they actually captured. Like, if there's any move that captures the special editions, yeah, that's the pose. Totally. And you know, and love original Cy, love special edition Cy, and I, you know, and I, I understand <laughs> kind of the impulse to to try to update and and have a more robust musical number in in you know at Jabba's palace and stuff, but you know. Um, as, just, especially as someone who loves music and um, as as nutty about music as I am about you know everything else, um, you know, uh, Lappy Neck is is a strong preference for me. But I got no no shade on people that love Jedi Rock. So you know, if you're into Jedi Rocks, cool. But yeah, Lappy Neck is 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 a, is for me. 
Maybe it was uh, George trying to have his club Obi Wan moment, like have his big, yeah, and, production I mean, number in the only movie really that could accommodate a big production number like that. Yeah, for sure. And it well, it was a good opportunity too to bring Femi Taylor back as Ula, and um, make more of a meal out of that whole scene, you know, uh, which kind of just goes by pretty quickly and the and the band aren't so emphasized it's just like you kind of briefly see the band playing lafty neck and then you know there's the kind of record scratch moment and then and then you know ula gets sent down into the pit and um and it, it definitely makes more of a meal out of it and has a little more um, and side does get a nice beat a nice coming oh. uh-oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah and you know and, and a lot of this stuff too was george playing with the new technology at the time to kind of as a test bed for what he would do later an opportunity for him to you know correct some things that he you know didn't like about the original films but also an opportunity for him to you know um the you know you know exercise some new muscles technologically and artistically um and it's hard to blame him for that um and you know, and I know what it's like to be a perfectionist. I am very much a perfectionist, <laughs> and and to 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 look back at your past work with some amount of shame, and to be like, you know, oh, I could have, you know, to have regrets. So I understand that impulse as well. Um, but but yeah, I'm definitely a a, a lofty neck guy. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. The changes, the special edition changes, was something for my generation, which were hotly debated, of course, and for a lot of people. That's kind of all they know, you know, that's that that's those it, are man. those are the films, you know, for them, because um, it's been a very long time since the original versions were out on, uh, on on DVD, I think was the last format that they existed yeah, as the bonus that bonus disc exclusive... for this. Yep. In the non anamorphic a, a beautifully passive aggressive way <laughs> to release them. You're only going to get them unrestored one time <laughs> yeah, on DVD. Unrestored. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> with the black bars or whatever like they're not oh yeah even... they're not they weren't even anamorphic no. they were... <laughs> yeah but we did get them and i still have my copies for sure oh i'm those, uh, looking at the those were... right over there yeah those are not going anywhere because those are pretty special representing you know but i love that that, that is a move that was that was that was my one of my favorite <laughs> george moves uh... yeah to what degree that was intentional or, or whatever i don't know but I mean, it was that's pretty a, magnanimous know, of him to release them at all again, you know, like, I, I mean, from everything I've heard, uh, and you can corroborate this, that <laughs> George does have a healthy sense of humor. Oh, that is, I can totally corroborate for sure. Yeah. So it would not surprise me if that was very much, yeah. a, oh, you want it? Okay. Well, yeah. here it is. You've been <laughs> asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean George definitely does a, definitely has a sense of humor, but you know, um, you gotta you know you gotta respect someone who has a vision and sticks to it. And George, you know, to George that those are the definitive versions of the films, and you gotta respect that on a certain degree because he came up with all this. You know, like you know, it's it's we're all just playing in his sandbox. You know, and, literally and in the case there. of action figures. <laughs> yeah, the, the stuff is you know, and those versions are out there. Absolutely. meticulously restored by fans it's they're not hard to find if anyone wants to see it's not like think, they are completely struck from the the obelisk no not at all and and he was know, in a unique it, position that he built of having the ability to do that and i still think sometimes very 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 occasionally screened an original print actually i think for the 30th anniversary of return of the jedi i went to an event at pixar um for that that they were for whatever reason, we're celebrating it over there. And a lot of the original crew uh, came together for that celebration. Oh, I think it was in celebration of Rinsler's Return of the Jedi book as well. Um, I was good friends with Jonathan Rinsler. Um, and he invited graciously invited me to that, that anniversary celebration at Pixar. And I believe they screened an original uh, print. But I, as I recall, it was really, it looked like it had been dragged behind a truck. It was in rough shape. <laughs> It was not a pristine version of the film. I mean, was... you know, people have a lot of nostalgia, but you go back and you look at, yeah, the you know, the the uncleaned mat lines. The yeah, so much that was done, yeah, to clean up those films. 
Yep. With those and, restorations. And, yep. And yeah, a lot of subtle things that are clear improvements, you know. Um, so, so there's a case to be made, at least for those changes, even if you don't like the other changes. Um, and I do think, I mean, one of my favorite things in the special editions as well is the, the, the you know, the Death Star battle in the first film, the way that that's recut and the new shots in that. I and think. yet we still don't have a John Null figure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know how John would feel about that, to be honest. Yeah. Well, um, tell Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Favreau <laughs> twist his arm. But um, no, that would be amazing. A, a, a John Null figure. I don't know. He probably would get a kick out of it. Um, but yeah, it's We're also uh, long overdue for an art of Doug Chang book. Yeah, no, that would be cool. I mean, yeah, I if mean, an art of has you know defined modern Star Wars the way that McCory defined classic. Absolutely, yeah, no, and Doug's uh, the kind of seminars that he puts on at Celebration every year are always amazing, and they those tend to get live streamed. Um, and yeah, I just love watching him tell his story watching him you know talk about his process because yeah he's definitely a modern master and so humble like he would be so embarrassed to hear us talking this way about him you know even now well, too late <laughs> exactly <laughs> you are who you are Doug. yeah just wait uh, till you, you pitch him on doing the disney plus documentary on him oh my god yeah no it, it, yeah absolutely i totally agree i mean it'd be great if it was like a, a joe johnson are there, are there pieces book. in your mind if I say the art of Doug Chang, if you're if you were to put together the art of Doug Chang, that immediately leap to mind. Do you, have, do you know of an image in your mind that leaps that should be the cover image if such a book ever existed? I mean, the like one that immediately left to mind. Work. Yeah, I mean, and it's great that John recognized it as well. You know, the Naboo Starfighter, I think, is just an incredible design. And I think it's one of Doug's favorite of his own designs. It's one that he would probably say, like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> um and uh that image of them you know flying you know i think there's like maybe three of them flying away from nebu into space um the beautiful production painting that he did um and i think that it, he one cool thing that in the lucasfilm offices that they've been able to do in modern times is to take some of those original art pieces especially the ones that were done at a really high fidelity you know that were um photographed um you know that were done by hand and not digitally um, and then able to be photographed at a really high resolution and have been turned into like wall murals, like an entire wall. It's like a, a Macquarie painting or whatever. There's quite a few of those up on the walls at Lucasfilm. And and that piece of Doug's in particular is up on a wall as well. And he always um, averts his eyes as he walks in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt it, but yeah, maybe so. Uh, but yeah, no, he's he's a super humble guy and, and um, but obviously is integral. So and it's, and it's so great. Action figure. Oh, for sure. As and... a, a Nabu Starfighter pilot. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be amazing. Um and yeah, and and um so great that John brought that ship back for the Mandalorian. That's such a cool you know, and you know, it's just great how much John also has embraced the prequels. And I think a lot of that is recog you know, because you know, the Lucasfilm Art Department you know, obviously run by Doug, but, you know, includes Ryan Church and Eric Tiemens. You know, this is, these are guys like, they're the three main dudes pillars. who, yeah, the pillars of, of, of the prequel design aesthetic and, and really led the charge on the whole design for those, those three films. So um, bringing that, you know, and re just recognizing, just trying to bring it all together, you know, is something that the Mandalorian does so well and that John does so well. And, and something that of course, Dave recognizes as well. Just, you know, and of course, you know, Dave, of you know, uh, being the co-lead with George on Clone Wars, just, you know, how important the prequel generation was to an entire generation of fans and wanting to weave all that stuff together in modern Star Wars is something really special and cool. I hope we'll eventually get a companion to these that will discuss the reintroduction of the N1. That would be so, cool. So fingers crossed the future <laughs> may hold that. Yeah, uh, you never know. Uh, so do you have any other honorable mentions? Hmm. Um, I definitely do, but it's just a matter of not wanting to bore you with a very long list of honorable you mentions. You are not boring me <laughs> at all. 
Um, it was made very clear that this was a conversation for as long as you would like to go. I am interested and and thrilled to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, no. Um, a lot of my the what remains on my list are just maybe we can do just like a, a quick fire round of just cool black series ones that didn't quite make the cut, but that as I was looking through the long now list of black series figures that have come out um since that line started and um Let's there's just a f- there's just a few that jumped out at me as ones that at the time i again it's at those moments when you just like rip open a figure and you just hold it and you look at it and you're like that is so cool like just like you're just like kind of blown away by what they're able to do um and one of them is kind of a surprising one um and it's the captain phasma with the Quicksilver baton. It's the second. It's the Captain Phasma from the Last Jedi, with the damaged, with the with you know, and the, her eye exposed, and the yeah. I that mean, was an exclusive as well, wasn't it? I believe so, and that is definitely one of my favorite Black series. Um, and I think it, when did it, did I have it? Yeah, it was twenty eighteen. Um, and so happy that I got that one, and it's just such a great moment in the film and a really great representation of that character um and kind of a cool companion to the finn as a first order stormtrooper that i mentioned earlier um just two cool characters yeah yeah i love the way that effect on the and i love that it carries down into the chest armor a little bit as well yeah the The, scarring the burn yeah really uh and for anyone who wants it Still available on Amazon. Hey, there you go. Highly recommend that one. Um, and a couple more that are more recent. Um, uh, the Zeb Aurelius character of uh, the Zeb Aurelius Black Series figure that finally came out that we were kind of all waiting for. Um, that came out probably... with a re-release. Speaking of like Rogue One. Yep. With a photo reel painting of all the Rebels characters, which was again a revelation. Yep. Now yeah, loved. I mean. And again, it just kind of, those reissues kind of show you how great the sculpts were and how, what a big difference the photoreal painting makes on a on a great sculpt. You know, oh, yeah, like, like that Ahsoka is night and day. Yep. And the sculpts were always there. It was just a matter of, you know, the deco. And yeah, what they're able to do with deco now just makes all the difference in the world. And yeah, the Zeb, uh, you know, just the, you know, Zeb is always a challenge as a character because just of the design is tough you know he's he's huge he's got those like dog legs you know it's just yeah, there's there's, there's no no quick reuse no exactly it's all, all new <laughs> nothing you can yeah there's no reuse so yeah he's a he's a trick which one, is but... also why we've gotten i mean that's if there's one deficit to the black series it is alien characters yeah i feel like they're starting to make up ground though in that regard and you know definitely with as we mentioned earlier having an ithorian in the line means that that opens the door for a bunch of ithorians but we need a Um, max rebo ban we need for sure i mean i feel like there's hope for all that though it feels like what they're doing is kind of going back to the cantina and then maybe they'll move on at some point in the future to jabba's palace and start to represent those classic aliens we need ephon mon and amon (laughs) amon (laughs) <laughs> we absolutely do <laughs> come on, come on, please come on then we'll know <laughs> that we've arrived exactly um yeah and another one i have on my list is jar jar binks from 2020 the jar jar binks black series i think is a freaking great figure speaking such a of great the rarity of alien characters yeah yeah i mean that's actually a really good point i mean i, I i'd love for there to be more gungans you know and and i wonder if they could take a boss of... Nass and Black Series? Can you imagine? Yeah, I mean, you couldn't really turn Jar Jar into Boss Nass exactly. There's not a lot but of you get a Tarpole. Could... Yeah, tar- Captain Tarpole's for sure. Um, and that would be a great Black Series figure. Um, but yeah, no. Love Jar Jar. Love Ahmed Best. Love that Black Series figure. I mean, it's just a a really beautiful representation. The deco on it, you know, the because he's got interesting like patterning on his skin and colors. Oh yeah, I mean like... that, that's sort of what they brought to Akbar yep. as well. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely like a not an easy figure to get right. And especially again at that scale with that level of detail. And they they nailed it. I love that Jar Jar. Um and was so happy to get into my collection finally. It's because he's like a you know, obviously a pivotal character. Um so yeah, Jar Jar was one of the ones on my list. 
I think we're finally getting an Anakin. Young yeah. Anakin. Yep. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, that was Pipeline revealed fairly recently, I think. Yeah, I think it was yeah. part of the celebration reveals, maybe. Yeah. Um, and the last honorable mention I will mention, um, and it's interesting because a lot of these ones are kind of, come to think of it, are kind of more deluxe price point ones that are a lot of original. But I think in some ways those are the ones that are the most impressive because it's like, you kind of don't expect them to ever <laughs> represent those characters because they're, they're complicated and Grievous. there's not a lot of not a lot of reuse and they're um uh but the one the one that uh jumped out at me is saw guerrera uh which is quite recent i think that's 2022 um and yeah, i think it was beginning of last year yeah middle of last year and what? it's just a again a, a character that's just grown and grown as far as like um you know kind of humble beginnings in clone wars as a character but you know well well known and 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 loved and but you know then obviously moving into rogue one and now andor and you know jedi fallen order and and just the character that's and and bad batch just a, a great character that we've come to know more and more and and so cool to finally get a representation of him in, in black series and with especially in that outfit which is so complicated with yeah, so many no zero re reuse on that yeah no no chance maybe the hose and... was from like the minoc mask <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and and just a great likeness you know tons of deco um lots of little bits and bobs all over his costume i mean it's it's a and he's got you know the one like droid foot and the other foot in the sandal. I mean, it's just like a, it's a, a very complex design with a lot of elements um, and, and tough to pull off and a great character, you know, like, for me, it always too is it's a great character represented. Well, it's not just about how cool the figure is or, you know, how complex the figure is. It's also my love of the character and then it being translated into a really cool action figure. Is so is there a character then the that hasn't been done that you would love to have done? I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Amanda Man. Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. That's an interesting question. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're finally getting a face reveal Vader Black Series figure because that's... I don't think we ever... We didn't get it in the Black Series before, did we? Like, where you could pull no, Vader's No, the most off. we got was the, the Emperor's Wrath from that. Right. Right, with the skull... Exposed, yeah. The, yeah. The Walgreens exclusive. Yeah. Um. So that's definitely one that's would have been high on my list until it was revealed as coming out uh, soon. Um, let me think. I mean, what... Someone that I haven't mentioned at all today, one of my favorite Star Wars characters is the bounty hunter Zuckus. I'm 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 a bit of a <laughs> I'm a bit of a like it's a bit of the stubborn side of me. Like I love I kind of like rooting for the underdog characters, and Zuckus is far from a terribly popular character, but that's part of the reason why I love him. And he's kind of and he's weird <laughs> and he's little and he's just... the comics have really built out Zuckus. Totally, yeah, no, and he's been represented really well in the Bounty Hunter series uh, recently, um, and has had a lot of, and we've actually seen Zuckus without his breathing apparatus and what their species look like without that. And actually, I was, you know, watching that art as it was coming in and giving notes on it and making sure that that was represented well because you know Zuckus means a lot to me as a character, so um, it was fun to be a part of that, that process. Um, but. Um, but yeah, you know, but obviously we've gotten Zuckus in Black Series, so um But it's been a while. He's due for a re-release. Yeah, that would be cool. Um yeah, I'd, I mean I'd love to see more Andor characters in Black Series because I really love that show. Um and it's great that we got the ones that we did, and those you were know, all really I... cool <laughs> figures. Like I, you know, I, I thought the the show was really represented well represented in the Black Series that we did get from Andor, in spite of it, the line not going super deep. Um, it'd be cool to see more of that. Maybe there will be more um, with the second season. Um, but um, hmm. I mean, I'm really you know I love Bad Batch, so I'm glad we got those. You know, and we've been spoiled by but quite a lot of really cool. Yeah, Sid would be awesome. Speaking of alien characters, I'm pretty mad at Sid after the second season, though. So I don't know if I need her in my collection. <laughs> and honestly, I'm just like, Argh. well, we've not yeah. seen the last of Sid. I'm sure. 
Oh gosh. Well, we'll see, I guess. But yeah. yeah but we'll e- even for what we've seen, Sid and, deserves and, a figure. Yeah, and yeah, again, a cool alien. Um, and it'd be cool to get her represented in a more kind of realistic style in the way that they've been doing the uh, Bad Batch in at least in Black series. Um, Although I a... would, I would love if even if they did as a limited release, I would love to see the reintroduction of the Clone Wars style figures. Yeah, just because that yeah, that figure line, if you go back to the sculpts on those, some of them, yeah, are amazing. Yeah, and that was yeah again that was when I was kind of in a bit of an ebb with collecting, um, and like I said, it was it I'm wasn't until flow. flow was on my desk. Oh, nice. Which is just yeah. Looks so. That's so cool. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, and honestly, um, that's part of the reason why. And this is another line that I felt like was a really cool representation of animated characters was the Star Wars Resistance action figure line. And again, it was pretty short. You know, there wasn't there wasn't the a Rebels lot of characters. Line. Yeah. And yeah, it'd be cool if something like that happened again. Just a more like a black series. Of course, true. We also need him in black series. Oh yeah, absolutely. Radis is such a great character. Yeah, it'd be Sadly, great. Sadly, not a lot of reuse. <laughs> no, <laughs> again, a, a tricky one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I just remember reading. Was it Gary Witta mentioned on Twitter that he would have put Akbar in Rogue One if they hadn't been using him already for the sequel trilogy? Um, that would have been Akbar, and it. And Akbar became Radis because Akbar was already being uh, used for Force Awakens. So that's kind of a cool well, tidbit. I'm glad we got Radis. Oh, me too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I love <laughs> Radis. He's awesome. Yeah, some really great. Again, it's like like some of the most heartfelt moments, both in Return of the Jedi and Rogue One, come from the Mon Calamari character somehow. You know, it's like. Um... Oh, I, th- I think one of the most iconic moments in, in Return of the Jedi is the slump. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the battle, That's that Akbar, precisely I mean, just, the moment I had in mind. Yeah, beautiful performance acting. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And under heavy makeup and stuff, just like really, yeah, yeah. The, those performers are incredible. Like um, the one that always jumps to mind for me is uh, Misty Rosas, who who was uh, Queel, um, and a bunch of other characters on The Mandalorian. But just what she was able to embody with that character in under all that makeup. You know, that kind of acting is just a, such a unique talent. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's just even then the Mandalorian himself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk, yeah, talking about mask work, that's like literal mask work where it's, yeah, your whole face is covered and you've got to convey the physicality emotion. Physicality of, yeah. And it's, and it's on two levels, you know, it's the physicality, but then it's also the voice work, which comes later, you know, it's all ADR'd and, and, and recorded in studio and, marrying those two performances and you know it's a true of Queel as well you know obviously Misty didn't do the voice so um you know it's a, a strange amalgamation of performances that becomes a whole character that you completely believe and are connected to you know emotionally it's really uh, amazing how that all comes together it's just part of the magic of movies you know but um yeah um but yeah um no, it's been cool reminiscing and and uh, <laughs> digging into you know it's 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 it was just super fun to just go back and think about all this stuff because it's not so often that I have a chance to reflect, especially particularly in the world of action figures. You know, like because it's been a lifelong hobby for me now, and you know, spanning all the way back to the seventies and my parents buying me these Kenner figs and stuff um, when I was a kid. And... You're in an attic right now. For you <laughs> exactly, as has been established. Call them my, brother, my brother's waiting by the phone as we speak, I'm sure. <laughs> Frantic text. Call. Yes. So about those extra figures. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sure they're just like in a bucket now. Well, I'm sure he got the cases though. Because we had both the, the double layer case that was more like with a movie like, like scene a on box. the front. With a, yeah, with like a snap on it and stuff. Right. But like the vinyl-y kind of cover to it. Was that the but yoga? then we also had... Yeah. Exactly, but then we also had the um, the Vader head one that was like more of like a clamshell no that came together. I don't think we had the C three PO one. I think we just had the Vader one. But I loved those as a kid too because it was a a better way. Like there was a space specifically in all of those cases for the accessories, 
which with the door that never the likelihood closed that they would disappear after a certain point <laughs> so it was kind of pointless <laughs> they were all just yeah, going to rattle like, around in there anyway but i think it was the first time that anyone ever considered like well maybe these little guns might get lost you know that's like you know and they were you know especially back in that day of like shag carpeting and stuff you know was, oh. you know you would deep pile hunting. was not friendly to no and gi especially... joe is even worse yep exactly yeah so um it was a tough time for <laughs> action figure accessories <laughs> but um but yeah i'm sure i'm sure they came in the cases so i'd like to think that it's it'd be it'd be just interesting even to see them maybe i should just get my brother to take some photos of those little toys you know if he can find them you know so, you, need to get, or, you need to get those two the at least those two back even if it's yeah old. gosh like i like to think that both yodas are are there but maybe only one survived who knows and see, and see I if your brother speculate. remembers <laughs> if you if your yes. brother sends you a photo back of the yoda see if he remembers the name of the other yoda yeah, I'll definitely have to get back to you on that front. Because yeah, when I that just that's something I literally haven't thought of in decades. And when I was <laughs> you know doing this research, I was you know suddenly thinking back like, wait a minute, yeah, like there were we had two, and the other one had a different name. And like I can't believe I can't remember the name because I'm sure you know I said it and thought of it like hundreds of times back then. But but yeah, um, I'll definitely get back It'll to come you, to you once that. once we're done. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The minute I sign off. <laughs> You'll be we'll walking from the, the room and we'll that's what it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And but, you gotta um, and you gotta look through that that uh, Boba Fett eye one more time if that's that's a good point. Yeah, that may, you know, come to think of it, that might be one worth picking up like at a convention loose. I can't imagine that those are cheap, even loose. No, no. But Dan um, Morrison has like 17 of them. So yeah. Dan, you're watching this right now. <laughs> please donate one of the <laughs> the the many boba fetts you have even just a loose head that i can yeah. look through the, the, the back of toy polloi if you're watching this right now <laughs> if you have a broken 12 inch boba fett please send the head <laughs> it's like something out of uh like seven or something you know like i'm send it, just please send, send the it head. to the second site foundation <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> We're gonna make this happen. We're gonna make this because ha- it's your anniversary. Exactly, it's all coming full circle. It's 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 an important anniversary. And also for all friends watching who now know what gift would be a perfect gift <laughs> to celebrate True. these anniversaries. I'm gonna get multiple heads of Boba Fett. From... Right now, Kristen <laughs> is is typing into eBay, twelve inch <laughs> Boba Fett Kenner, looking at the prices and closing that. And tab. being exactly and not mentioning it ever again. <laughs> Oh, did yeah, you that's see my episode? I... No. <laughs> nope. That's something I have not looked at, like the price of, you know, yeah, when I was um, back in the 90s before I ended up in Montana, I remember going to visit some friends in San Diego, and there was actually a Star Wars store in San Diego at that time in like 1996 or something, maybe. There was a store in San Diego that just sold Star Wars stuff, and it was at kind of one of those low ebbs when interest yeah, in star wars was special edition so this is yep. even and i just remember them having tons of stuff and it being all relatively cheap but of course that was a time when i was relatively broke so you don't and want to it pick just up a ten dollar like... millennium falcon exactly like like the opportunity was there but I, you know i was well, not prepared really for it. about that is that is right before the era of ebay so that was before yep. everyone had a sense and an outlet to sell these things yep like, I mean, you know, be talking about, I was talking with someone today, and they asked me, why don't you go to swap meets and work around? Because it's not the same yeah. anymore. No. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Like, you could have, someone could just have a box full of, like, loose Kenner figures. Yard in great sales. shape back in the day. Yeah, yard sale, or yeah, some big swap meet. Or but Now know. everyone knows value. Yep, Instantly. it's so easy to find that stuff out, yep. So the the, the odds of finding something... That where someone doesn't realize what they have, you know, yeah. just so, so much so lower. Unless someone is a, over a certain age or just vindictive, you're not going to get <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. those kind of things making it out anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, those no, days are long gone. But I remember those days very clearly, yeah. And and, um, and yeah, I mean, I don't have any personal regrets, but we definitely unloaded quite a lot of uh, action figure lines that we weren't so attached to at, in garage sales at my house growing up. Um, and... Yeah, a, a buck. Yeah, exactly. All those things just 
lost to time, but you know, but, but I liked, I mean, in the same way that my niece and nephew got a chance to have a second go with our toys when me and my brothers, when we were kids. Um, and now they I have think their that's, time that's and kind it comes of, back to you. Exactly. And that's really <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> and that's ultimately what these things are for, you know, they're, they're being enjoyed. They're not to be, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, they're, it's, it's very much like in Toy Story, you know, it's like toys want to, toys ultimately want to be played with, toys want to be enjoyed. And, um, and yeah, I, I was Unless just you're glad. the prospector. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, that the toys of my childhood got a, a second, second go around. Um, and now they'll have a third back with you. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, unless, I don't know. Unless, unless they love them. Maybe, who knows? Maybe they are displaying them. Maybe they actually are in a place of... That is true. And well, and I definitely, you know, when my brother had his first kid, my niece, um, one of the first things, I was still working at the ranch at the time, and we had like a little Yoda plush that I um, got, and it was before she had seen anything Star Wars, and I think her first reaction was like, huh? Like, what is this? Who's this weird little green dude? Like, she just had no context, you know? And was just like a toddler herself but um grew to love yoda in particular i imagine so i don't honestly know i don't think we've talked about it but it's something i should definitely bring up to her now that she's like in high school which is so bizarre but um use that to distract from you taking the figures back (laughs) exactly (laughs) but uh yeah yoda was her first character um that she loved and my brother would show her empire strikes back but like fast forward through any of the scary parts kind of thing um, no cave exactly the cave was not in in the cards but um so yeah it's it, it's cool that you know that's i mean that's one of the amazing things about star wars in general is just the generational aspect of it and how so much of it is so much of the love of star wars is is passed on so i'm glad that you know the toys that we love so much and the characters that we love so much can mean something it means something in, in a similar way to the, you know and that it's not just us like, no, Star Wars is for me, you know. <laughs> you can't have it, it's mine. You know, like I'm I'm happy. Well, you know, and those figures have seen better days. So, you know. Um uh, you know, there's like toys for playing with, and and those were definitely toys that were heavily played with. So um, now multi-generational. Yes, they've incurred a whole nother generation of scars and <laughs> wounds and lost hands and various things, yeah. Well, I mean, before we go, I want to make sure that I do it. Uh, I don't think I've given a shout out and a thank you to this. Uh, uh, but this is on an open chat. We were having a conversation, and I don't know if you're familiar with Lance Speeder Luke, who is a customizer, does bring it 3D dioramas that people can print out. Mm. Uh, but with the conversation we started talking about, uh, it was the Mike Case and I uh, uh, were talking about uh, the. Uh, that they had that they hadn't done a black series snowy Chewbacca like Hoth Chewbacca mm, yeah and so he quickly in like ten minutes as we were talking <laughs> did this custom cool for one of the black series Chewbaccas and just yeah. just did it that's awesome and kindly Love sent it. it to me oh wow that's so, so cool. I now have a a Hoth Chewbacca with a, a big thanks to Land Speeder Luke that's who also awesome. found me my Doctor Afra figure. That oh was wow! Impossible to find. Oh, is it the first issue, Doctor Afra? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That I don't know how I ended. It. I don't know if that was a pre-order, but I definitely yeah. That was one that I was very incentivized to get. Uh, and and the, and the, the, and the uh, yeah the droids the mur- yeah. murder droids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> were those all separate? They weren't part of a set. No, they, they were, were separate. separate. They, they were. Uh, you're thinking of the San Diego Comic Con vintage collection set. I got those as well. Yeah. <laughs> But, I remember yeah. waiting in line at the booth to get those. Yep. Me too. Yeah, I did not ha- get any privilege with that. I, I definitely waited with everyone else. Yeah, for that those. was 2018, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Was that Orlando? No, that was San Diego. Oh, okay. That was a San oh, Diego okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that. I think I probably was there to be on a panel for one of my books. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, th- I remember hearing recently that those the Afro black series were particularly hard to get, or I don't remember exactly what went down when those were on sale. But yeah. The, the, uh, I don't know if you saw okay. the new Afra who is posed. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. 
I love that. And I love that build an arc too. Like I love that they're doing the the build an artifact uh with yeah, the what's um, what's in the, the Temple of Doom is the Sankara stone hold the sort of display. The skull, yeah. I think that's right. The um, shrine, like the shrine they're in in the Yep, in the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and then I'm trying to think. And but we don't get anything with the last crusade. Yeah. Build, build an artifact with them. No, I think yeah, with the because the professor Indy comes with a shield. Yep. Which I actually got that one already. And yeah, and the false grail is comes with Donovan. You can see and the, the real the, grail the false grail comes with the other Indy? I'm not sure. Last or maybe crusade? Yeah. Maybe so. I don't know if I've yeah, I don't know. I think I saw if all those accessories have been revealed yet. Um, but maybe they have. Um yeah, no, I, I'm 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 definitely forgetting. But yeah, it's not there's I don't think there's really like kind of a build an artifact that you could really do for that film. Um but yeah, the shield was really cool. I just opened that Professor Indie figure recently. Um and it was oh, and it comes to also the accessories have been really neat. Like it came with the 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 version of the Grail Diary. The mailed the, version. The mailed version, yeah. We should have gone to the Marx brothers. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Precisely so. Um it, what was the other accessory that the professor Oh, it was the the, torch, uh, the, the bone torn, torch. The, the bone torch, yeah. Which are all really kind of thoughtful and cool accessories, you know, just like like if you know the movie, you instantly get the references. Um But so. we need the two uh army intelligence yeah agents. Yep. That would be great. Um, um just to get Hootkins. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and they could move that sculpt over, you know, that head over to uh, Porkins. Make it happen. Yeah, I know, exactly. reuse. That would be clever. All of a sudden, we'd have both Hootkins and Porkins. That would. What a world would we be living in then? I mean, you know, we need heavy set representation. Absolutely. Give, give us a snap, Wexley. And those are beloved characters, both. You know, I think Hootkins. Who's who's the other the other uh, agent? Yeah, in? Uh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name either. Yeah. Uh, we also need the guy pushing the arc in the warehouse at the end. He deserves his moment. <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep cut. <laughs> He's a really tiny, though. He's just we, like we, need, we need a Dan Aykroyd figure from yeah. Temple of Doom. No, that's a good one. It'd be great to get, like, we need our, like we the, need Mar our, the Maharaja from Temple of Doom. We need a plane play set. <laughs> yes. The raft? The, the raft. The raft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> A mine cart. Yeah. I, I mean I love like Land Speeder like Luke. I, I know you're you're collecting the adventure <laughs> series on the side. Start designing 3D prints of the mine cart so people yeah. can we haven't got a it's... willy announced yet. No, I guess not. But we definitely got a short round, right? An adventure series. Short announced. rounds, yeah, that's, that's coming. coming. Yeah. I see I'm a I'm a Willy defender. I know I think Willy does exactly what Willy needs to do as a character. Like, if you want Willie to be Marion, Willie is never going to be Marion. Yeah, it was never intended like, to be. No, exactly. Like, like it was no accident that that Willie is the way she is. You know, she and she's, I think, by design, different than Marion. And you, if you can accept the fact that she's, you know, going to react differently than Marion would have in those same situations, then there's, you know, nothing we can say. But like, you know, Willie's Willie and Marion's Marion. They're different characters, and I know a lot of people especially seeing those two films back to back as they were being released kind of reacted very negatively to Willie but I think and Willie's not an unintelligent character I mean she no also was clearly making a nice living as a performer yeah at the beginning yeah, of no, the film she's working yeah absolutely she's working her own angles just like Marion was you know she's but living a completely different life and she just gets swept up in the adventure with Indy and you know and they have that the that weird you know, romantic thing that sort of happens in the in and the it, temple before they go down into the the catacombs and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, you also need uh, a campfire place it mm. with a and, with oh, a giant bat. Are we getting um, Elsa from? from oh yeah, Elsa Crusade? was announced, right? Okay, I thought, hey, but I thought, no, Willie Elsa was announced. Yeah, you know, I think so. Yeah, again, like there's just so like I can't tell you how many pre-orders I currently have. In the system, like we don't <laughs> have Amazon. a Bolaram yet. That hasn't been no. announced. 
that would be great. I mean, he's obviously a major villain. The I'd say he's the major villain in in uh, Temple. Um, yeah, it'd be great to get like a collapsed bridge into ladder playset, like on the side of the cliff, would be pretty cool. Because uh, and, and, getting... and rolling alligators, right? Is there a little action <laughs> <Yeah>. feature? <laughs> exactly. You turn a crank. The same, the same <laughs> stock footage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my god! The yeah, but I'm so that. yeah, I'm but I'm so happy with that. The adventure series is 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 happening, and that the figures are coming out so it just exists. Yeah, and that they're pumping them out, like they're coming out so quickly. After I I feel like you know I feel like we I just started ordering these figures yeah, for the I'm first time, and I've got I didn't a even see bunch that the, of them. Uh, the uh, nightclub, the club Obi Wan, yeah, out. and that comes with the Nirachi. Yeah. Uh, right? Yep. And I can tell you right now, it's, it it's on my floor. Antidote. It does, um, and it comes with the sword, um, and the kebab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, come yeah. on, how can we not get opening it's, of the film? Yeah, Nurhachi, the anything antidote, goes the diamond. A... Yeah, yeah, you, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm super attached to this indie look. I mean, it's got it. It's it's like a dual. It has like a two two uh, layers for me, um, one of which is seeing this film for the first time um, when it originally came out, and just being shocked at how different Indy looked, but and how but how cool he looked, and like I again I had no conception of what this movie was until I saw it in theaters for the first time, and just being like like my mind blown, just like whoa, like Indiana I mean, Jones can look like that. That whole like, opening number is just yeah. spectacular. I mean, yep. I, that I think is is some of the one of Spielberg's best sequences. Absolutely, yeah. No, it was it just cracked my mind open as a kid. I was just like, "Am I in the right movie? <laughs> like, what's happening?" <laughs> um, and and you know what? Just... Effects of that time, him, the, them at the opening number, walking through the the titles. Yeah, yeah. No, super cool, and and also just the the busby berkeley of it all the dance number and the you know it's just and how it becomes like a fantasy it's very much like singing in the rain where all of a sudden it's like it's so clearly no longer in the nightclub it's almost like a fantasy version of of what's happening you know um the musical oh, number and the, version and, and just the escalating stakes the ice on the floor and yep. yeah just yeah and, and the rolling gong and everything yeah it's just if so just, well like, executed cinematic perfection and just rolling Spiel, right in the short round and then going into a car <laughs> chase i mean yes yeah. And immediately into the plane. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a great opening to a film. And Dan Aykroyd. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It all comes back to Dan Aykroyd. Um, but also, like, the meta-ness of, of Indy kind of as James Bond, with Spielberg wanting to do a James Bond film and George pitching Indy to him, and then having this kind of James Bond version of Indy is a very kind of, like, meta, behind-the-scenes kind of thing. I mean, if um, people have not picked them up, picked it up the that indiana jones book yeah that originally did uh, also Rinsler did. yeah incredible yeah no i mean yeah Rinsler's. you know john was the one who gave me the chance to do my first art book um and obviously an incredible author himself and and such an honor for him to 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 give me that opportunity and we were friends and we'd get lunch we'd go walk down in, uh, to the marina in, in San Francisco and get Chinese, you know, and just talk about movies and stuff. So I miss John, you know, every day. Um, and just an incredible author. But yeah, I mean, such amazing, such a huge amount of books and about so many things that I love. And so it's just such a great legacy that, and everyone that John left behind. Spectacular, just... Yep. Yeah, wow. so well-researched, so interesting. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, Planet of the Apes. Alien, like so many other franchises outside of star wars that i really love it and that I he mean, loves. one of those dependable yep authors when it comes to you know the book and the sh picking the up. shining book that's uh now coming out that tashin is releasing that he was a part of with uh lee unkridge at, at pixar who are, they're both total shining heads those two guys and 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 always wanted to do a shining book and it's finally happening posthumously for john um yeah just uh an amazing author and Someone who I aspire to one day <laughs> reach the heights of of, of writing that he achieved. Um, well, and I, I think you've done incredible work. As thank well, you. And your your books are uh, equally as anticipated. 
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, but, you know, we're always, you know, all of us standing on the shoulders of giants to a certain degree. And for me, you know, one of those giants is definitely John Rinsler. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, what were you talking about? <laughs> like, how did I get on this tangent? Um, there, yeah. there are no tangents. It's all discussion. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But, um, I think, I think we would just, I, I mentioned how great his indie book. You're right. Yes. And it is and, a good and, book. and overlooked, I think, unfairly, that the fact that it exists, you know, I don't know how easy it is to get anymore, but people should hunt it. I know there's also a paperback version of it. Yeah. And that's one of the ones that I definitely have. Um, because I have like my home library and then my office library. Um, and uh, yeah, it, and well, and unfortunately, a lot of our, even the um, Art of Star Wars books, um, the, the the classic ones for the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy, I think are all out of print right now. Which I can't is like, imagine what they cost with paper costs the way they are today. I know my the Venture Brothers book is out of print as well, which I suspect is for similar reasons. Yeah, yep. Um, and... Yeah, one book that I had long <laughs> regretted not picking up was um, the Trisha Bigger costumes book. Um, I have, and I, I have finally got a copy for quite edition. a lot of my. Oh, you have the collector's edition with all of the samples in it. Yeah, I have oh, that. You are so and lucky. The, and the modeling the galaxy. Yeah, with the with the, with the chunks of the speeder in it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yep. Did you get those when those were originally released? Uh, they were very kindly sent to me as review copies. At the wow time. you are so lucky <laughs> so, oh have you have you seen the 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 full deluxe of the costuming one yeah those, they, those were on display incredible. actually yeah for for i would walk by them all the time on my like way there's to... palpatine's revenge of the sith yep no yeah. just yeah no i you are so lucky because those are just incredible books um and the kind of thing that you don't see very much anymore insight insight editions right yep yeah yeah, so yeah, just recently I got just the regular standard. I can't imagine that version being and... released today. But that also was the you know, the the benefit of that, particularly the the swatches one was it yeah. was done right after the film was done. Yep. You have access to all of that material. Yep. What's yeah, a fun no, that... thing we can do? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and it, 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 I think it's sometimes I mean it was a different time for sure. And a different time in publishing generally, um, but also just a different time in Star Wars. And um, I think it's easy to forget that in spite of Star Wars being as huge as it was, George was an independent filmmaker and Lucasfilm was not a public company. And George could kind of do whatever he wanted, you know, and, you know, and that's yeah, a sure, lot of robot chicken. You want to do some Star Wars? Yeah, that's, sure. He, he just had the ultimate freedom as a creator, you know. And even if something was not a big success, it was like, meh, move on to the next thing, you know? Um, and that is such, a, that is, there's nothing, there's, no, I can't think of another filmmaker like that or, you know, that, that, that had that something kind, that successful that, 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 and remained independent and didn't ever, and never sold it. You know, I mean, obviously he's eventually sold Star Wars, but, you know, in the time that he was, you know, creating But he it. didn't sell it under duress. There no. was no, it was when he was ready to. Yep. And after Precisely. it had been well established, there was yep. no, oh, I, I can't make any more movies, so I guess I'm gonna have to sell this thing. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, and that reflects back into the the action figures as well. I mean, um, you know, it's obviously a different time too in the world of toys and action figures. Um, and you know, there's a lot of competing things competing for children's attention, you know. Uh one of the main ones being just video games, you know, just being such a huge industry and being something that um is a little flashier than than just a plastic representation of a character but and who's um, going to buy new figures when your uncle just give them their, their, their <laughs> precisely <laughs> so but um so you know i mean and that's a that's a that's a tough thing for people of our generation you know to sometimes accept that times change um situations change and you kind of go, just got to go with the flow and um but i don't know i have a lot of great a, gr a lot of gratitude just as a fan for for what's happening now as well um and and i mean who could have thought i mean just looking at the my target hall but in in <laughs> this in, in this year 2023 that we would have this incredible um you know six you have indiana line. jones figures that you're buying I, and not only indiana jones figures but this indiana jones figure this version of indiana jones <laughs> somehow in spite of you know it's a target exclusive so it's not like 
you know, everywhere, but it's, it's being produced in enough quantities to, you know, justify its existence. And, I mean, you know, as you hold that up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even more so because he is, is represented in plastic <laughs> form, finally. Um, and, and, and at this quality too, just incredible stuff. And I love that we're in this, you know, Indiana Jones month you know, that we've just passed into, you know, um, with all the focus on Indy as a character. Because, yeah, yeah, for me, yeah, Indy was one of the it. giant pillars of my childhood. I mean, Indiana Jones as a character just holds so much meaning for me. And I know a lot of people. Um, and I'm excited for the new see film. the re-release on the, on the big screen this weekend? Oh, the re-release. Yeah. You get Sunday and Monday? Oh, boy. It's another one where it's just like, <laughs> do I, do I, you know, or do I wait? Because it's like, you I know, mean, there's, I know. I mean, how many opportunities is there going to be? But I mean, we do have you, our own, we do have our own this, screenings. Yeah. I mean, then you have enough time to watch the others before. Yes, it's true. And you Although, can see it with a civilian audience as well. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> I I feel like yeah. I mean, we do our internal screenings, of course, and I'm and I and I don't know for certain, but I have a, a suspicion that we will be screening all the indie films leading up to the new one um, at Lucasfilm for employees, and possibly up at Skywalker Ranch, which is an amazing privilege that we also get. Um, we still uh, have access to screenings up there, and that theater is just bonkers, amazing, just like the most comfortable theater seats you'll ever sit in to watch a movie in they're like just rockers and super cushy it's just like the it's so comfortable so such an and the sound of course it being you know on the same campus as skywalker sound the sound in the theater up at skywalker ranch is just incredible Fine, i'll accept the invitation <laughs> if you twist I will start my arm. driving now <laughs> we'll see you in a few hours um but um more like so a week that, but i'll yeah but i'm on my way so you know sometimes you know, an experience in your average kind of multiplex kind of pales in comparison. But I, but the, we do have amazing movie theaters here in the Bay Area, especially the Alamo Draft House in San Francisco. You just bought indie figures. This is the perfect weekend <laughs> for you to go treat yourself. You know, it's true. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll give Kristen Baber a call. See take if your indie with it. you. You can both we'll, take we'll, your matching we'll, indies. Exactly. Exactly. We'll both be holding them as we watch the movie. <laughs> Neither unboxing them. <laughs> yes. I'm no. I mean. That's actually a ritual that I have. Um, so I, I'll often photograph my action figures for Instagram or whatever at some point during the week as they come in. And uh, and then I like to open them all at once um, on the weekend, just as kind of like as I'm right before you go started. to the theater with Kristen to go see. You know, you, you're you making all very good points here. Um, all I'm saying is if it happens, there has to be a photo of you two with the figures at the theater. <laughs> Post that on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and it's such a great movie, and I, I mean the restorations just look incredible. I have them all, you know, of course, all on 4K, and um, they just look amazing at home. And now they're all on Disney Plus, of course, including Young Indiana Jones Adventures, um, including the episode with you know Harrison Ford with India with a beard, you know, no um, eye patch, no eye patch. Um, and yeah, it's um, it's a great time to be an Indiana Jones fan for sure um excited well, I look for forward all of to the it. picture yeah no it's it's do you have um, you see the 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 uh since i've been going back and trying to get the 30th anniversary coins that were mm, with the figures yeah and the various mail aways they did sorry but slowly like this was the mail away oh, wow box set that the uh, folks could get to fill out the thing the and that was the crystal skull time yeah coin oh, wow. that was given away but that, that is a whole world I that I don't even know about. So you're yeah. So yeah. with the figures, they had the uh, I knew about these coins in a weird way that I didn't even remember because uh, I have the Toy Fair one because I attended mm. Toy Fair to cover it in 2007 right. when they were announcing this line. So like right. the... oh wow, and then it has oh <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Like what are the characters in here? We got uh Endor Leia, mm -hmm. Snow Trooper, uh Bespin Luke, uh Hoth Han, Bosk, <laughs> and IG eighty eight, and the the Star Wars thirtieth anniversary cool. coin. 
Uh, so I have the, I had the Toy Fair one, which was an exclusive only given away at Toy Fair. So I was looking into these, and I didn't know this, but at the same 2007 San Diego Comic Con, they also gave away an Indiana Jones coin. Oh wow! Uh, promoting the uh, the forthcoming release mm-hmm. of just Indiana Jones four. <laughs> cool. So, uh, as I'm talking to you and before anyone else sees this, relatively cheap on eBay. <laughs> if you wanted to pick one up, I'm making a note of it right now. <laughs> and it was a it, it was an exclusive. S- SDCC Indiana Jones coin. You can find it. It was an exclusive to San Diego. It was a giveaway. Mm. They were giving away at the. I'm nice. assuming the Lucasfilm booth. And that was my first year. That was 15 years ago. Um, Again, we go back to the anniversary. It's all coming full circle. <laughs> uh, that was a fun year. I mean, my first year at Lucasfilm being the the year of the release of the Clone Wars film and Crystal Skull. Like things were, it was like, whoa, this is like a pretty monumental year. Things are hopping. And exactly, things are moving in this company. <laughs> There'll never be this many things coming out at once again. I was, yeah, that year I was pretty spoiled because, yeah, it was. I mean, of course, that kicked off the entire Clone Wars series, um, and and that came in subsequent years. But yeah, for the start of the Clone Wars and um, and indeed the return in the same year, my first year with the company was pretty special. It is a it is a crime that we do not have a an art of book for the Clone Wars series. That all we have. Is well, there the... was one, <laughs> but it only covered the first two years. Right. Um. And. Yeah, uh, Gary Shepke did that, um, and I knew Gary back in the day um, from, you know, I used to get lunch with the, the Clone Wars art department, like our art department and the Clone Wars art department would come together at Skywalker Ranch to get lunch, I think once a week, so we'd all just like talk shop and hang out, and, and they would all come to the store at the ranch and buy Clone Wars action figures, uh, and that's I mean, where I got to know Killian Plunkett, who I mentioned earlier. Clearly um, so much stuff to be yeah. included. Yeah. Yeah. So, um so whoever's got it who is dark horse that's been doing the animated yeah also we did ducktales and the venture brothers books stay hey. do the <laughs> book somebody it there would be cool i mean yeah that is a bit of a shame i mean it's not on the tip of everyone's mind you know you think the time they would have done it would have been when the clone was returned um but maybe but having I stuff mean, like bad batch still in the mix means that style is still alive and and uh tales tales of the jedi yeah so who knows yeah i mean that's a world you know that i you know obviously my books are all abrams and tend to in the dwell in the the live action realm but um but i love those books and you know have them all and including the clone wars one um i got like i think there was a deluxe version of that clone wars art book that came with some prints i believe that i somehow was able to snag before that went i think it was already out of print but it wasn't it was quite as expensive yeah yep and um yeah i I managed to snag that deluxe version before it completely disappeared and got super expensive um but yeah that book is incredibly hard to find folks yeah 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 no that is definitely something that um yeah would it seems like a no-brainer i hope that that comes together myself just as a fan um another clone wars art book would be on it dark horse (laughs) I think yes. it might have been a Harper Collins release at the time. Maybe so, yeah. Um, yeah, again, like, you know, and yeah, in those first few years with the company, I was just so isolated, literally and kind of generally uh, from the rest of the company up at the ranch that I didn't know what was going on. Every once in a while, I'd just get invited to some screening or whatever, and the I just roll on up in. at the ranch. You were, <laughs> yeah, the center of the uh, of the universe. <laughs> In, uh, in in some ways, but also just distant from everything else that was happening, and just kind of out of the loop. In well, you were in ways, the attic. Yeah, I was literally all up in the attic. Yeah, like my old Star Wars action figures. It all comes full circle. Like <laughs> I was in the attic. The toys are somewhere in an attic. You're gonna get yes. them back. I'm telling you. Yeah, it might happen. Uh, well, before we go, I will uh, quickly because I, I picked up a few things recently. Yeah, pick this up today. Ooh. 2004 original trilogy release. Wow. But I love this. The simple of well, let's just put a little spray paint on the bottom and make it. <laughs> but what's great about this was, and this was you know early digital uh, uh, 
their use of Photoshop to mm -hmm. remove characters from the background <laughs> and put that as the cards. Yep. So like the uh, the Maydean figure removes him from the frame that he's in, but leaves the two uh, oh, wow. uh, support staff behind him. Huh. So it's putting if... the figure in the scene for this era. Yeah, I imagine that would have been done on on the Hasbro side, on on the on the Kenner side. You know that they would that that kind of work would be done in house. And because I would just in in seeing that, I'm like thinking like, oh, do those photos exist somewhere in our archive? And they probably wouldn't be on our side. It would have probably been on the yeah. On the but well, the main Dean one is clearly just a frame grab from the film where they just yeah took him out, painted him out. Yeah. yeah. And that was the kind of work that back in the day in the pre-digital era they would have just done literally with paint, but um, that was definitely the digital. Ooh, cool. Lobot release. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we got that. And uh, very kind. Shout out to Hal and Jen who on their recent journey uh, picked this up for me. Oh, wow. Cool. Which now has a yeah, Obviously, it has a totally different a bit, meaning. A bit deeper re relevance yeah. as a thing to have. And they picked that up at, at the... I think you can only get it in the shop that's in... Yeah, in Star Cruiser. Yeah. So you can't just get it in uh, Galaxy's Edge. Hmm. Yeah, I, actually, I know um, Pablo Hidalgo is a collector of those... Not the the specific to the Star Cruiser, but to the Droid Factory. doesn't transform in anything. I don't <laughs> Yeah, he's got a ton of those, especially the Astromechs that they, um, the, the Droid Factory ones that they sell in the, in the parks and stuff. Yeah, they also sent the, uh, all the ephemera. Oh, so there's cool. The tips. Uh, here's the, the Sublight Lounge food menu. <laughs> menu. Uh, what's nice? Well, here's they sent all of the, uh, I guess the daily the missives you get, right? It's so here's the introduction. Uh, here's one apologizing for the events that have transpired so far in the time <laughs> together. That's great. Uh, the farewells. Mm -hmm. uh, the drinks menu. Nice. Yeah, I know people have also been collecting like the coasters that you get at like Ogas and stuff. Hey. <laughs> there you go <laughs> speaking of so very very nice thank you to hal and jen for sending that is those. super nice uh and then another friend sent uh oh the 20th century records 45 for the of... star wars theme and the cantina band oh wow that's a great that's a double a side if ever there was one it's like who could say what is the true a side to that that single two classic songs so uh nice to have it still in the in the sleeve. Yeah. Uh also I wonder if that was ever in like a jukebox. I imagine so. It must have been. Yeah. Not that one in particular, but just no, that no, 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 I meant yeah, yeah. The, the, the I mean the Star Wars craze was so big at that yeah, point it was that just, I can't imagine. Yeah. Particularly Cantina, Cantina band thing. especially, yeah. Uh and then Hmm. The oh, Buena Vista. Yeah. yeah, the storybook. What a weird, so <laughs> full circle. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and then, speaking of Yoda. Nice. Yeah, I think Blast Points may have done some episodes about those Buena Vista record releases uh, in the past. Yeah, that's my pal Mark, who sent me his childhood Star Wars toys, which included... Ah, yes. I remember that very fondly. Did you have the droid maker? Was that a part of your? Yep. We had it. Also, the job is done yet. Dungeon, the 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 vague reskin of it. Talk about reuse. we did not have that, but we definitely, but we did have that kind of the the repainted, um, cardboard backed, Jawa sandcrawler diorama piece <laughs> that was then repainted as like Hoth. They just painted <laughs> it white. We had both of those for sure. And those were just kind of pretty much just display bases for your figures, effectively. Uh, the last bit of ephemera that I had, I saw an eBay listing for it, and I thought it was a weird time, was the Star Wars Fan Club Welcome Kit from mm. 1994. Oh, nice. Uh, including the... Letter from George. The welcome letter. Yes. Authentic signature. Of course. Sure. Yes. Uh, Signed each one. 
the Star Wars Insider uh, list of things you got, <laughs> which <laughs> includes the suitable for framing. <laughs> that actually looks in really great condition for 94. Oh, I mean, it's... Looks I'm beautiful. surprised how sharp it is. Yeah. And good stock as well. Hey, another really beautiful looking... Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, to put on your skateboard. Mm-hmm. All 90s kids must have. The official fan club. Fan club. Uh, and the Hard. thing that uh, I have not read yet, but I'm curious, is the hard cold facts about Hoth poster. <laughs> I love that title. <laughs> we somebody somebody earned their pay with that with that hard cold facts uh, title. Yeah, that's they, a that's a beautiful image though. I don't know if I've ever seen that illustration on the back before. Really? Yeah, that's a, I don't recognize that. Is it a, it's a Macquarie, isn't it? No. For sure not. It must be some kind of like. Oh no! You know it's well. Uh, it was uh, Steve Reese. Hmm. Maybe was doing fan club. Yeah, it may have been like an exclusive. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I love the perspective. Boy, it's rare so that the original I see a piece probably of sitting up in the archives. <laughs> right probably. Now. Someone yep. go dig it out. Yeah, it's going to make me want to dig into our database and see if I can find it in there. Um, oh, the the hard cold facts about Hoth was written by Andy Mengels. Hmm. Cool. Andy Mengels is a freelance writer in Portland, Oregon, as of nineteen ninety four. More power to him. Uh, That's awesome. Well, thank you again for doing this. Yeah, no, I thanks for having me. It was on. fun. Yeah, no, it's always great to, you know, um, it's I mean. It, love being on podcasts love love talking star wars but especially about action figures because it's you know obviously I, i'm probably of all the lucasfilm employees one of the more public <laughs> ones who <laughs> shares my collection and 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 um is known for collecting action figures so getting another this yeah, kind of opportunity a, to a single one of pablo's transformers i've seen <laughs> yeah. his drawings but I don't well, know if i've seen a I mean... single one of his transformers in his collection yeah, no, he's definitely, yeah, I mean, it's great that he, he's able to share his love in, in that way, but yeah, no, it's it's super fun to talk toys and, and, and to share my stuff, um, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a hobby, obviously, that, that means a lot to me, so it was, it's it's rare that I get a chance to reminisce in this way, it's rare that I get a chance to, to talk about action figures in this way, so yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm glad you're able to be on. I'm I'm happy uh, that you continue to be a uh, uh, an element that keeps Kristen engaged in collecting. <laughs> <laughs> a negative influence on her life and her wallet. You are a positive encouragement towards <laughs> yes. getting more figures. That's true. Yes, I, I like this. I like to see it that way. Raiders of Lost Ark. <laughs> yes, we will with, with our action figures held close. Perched on your shoulders. <laughs> yes. Make a hat out of it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and before we go, do you have uh, any any anecdote from working with George in the years mm. that uh, that you were well, you were both there? An anecdote. I mean, the best anecdote that I have, which is one that I've told before. Um, so it's it's the one that always kind of comes to mind, but it's probably the best story. Is that like. It was my third, you know, I was hired, I was interviewed by Rick McCallum and uh, Catherine Ramos uh, up at the main house. I was not interviewed by George, you know, um, to be the coordinator of the art department. And so, you know, it's just, that's a, a story into itself, just walking up the stairs, entering Rick McCallum's office, having only ever seen him and behind the scenes stuff from the prequels. And then he, all of a sudden he's in front of me and I'm somehow at Skywalker a Ranch. Feature. Yeah, precisely <laughs> this is a very trippy moment unto itself but you know so i get hired by by rick and rick's you know i mean george is ultimately all of our bosses but you know rick was really like my immediate boss and so i'm there on the third day and, and faye david who was the coordinator before me in the prequel era she um came in very graciously to train me on my third day just to kind of show me the ropes a little bit because I was, you know, obviously pretty, I was green to Lucasfilm, but also green to being a, a coordinator of, of the art department. So Faye came in 
And I walk in the front door of the main house at Skywalker Ranch that day, this third day of of work, and I see people in like jump like orange jumpsuits kind of milling about. And one of them is handing a lightsaber to George Lucas in front of me as I like literally as I open the door and I'm like, what is happening? What is <laughs> like it's the first time I'm seeing George at work, you know, and it's just like a really bizarre scene to to walk into. And I don't have any of the context for it at the, you know, in the moment. I you know. It was only later that I kind of realized what was happening. So I go up the elevator up to the third floor and uh, meet with Faye and Faye's, you know, showing me the ropes. And eventually I hear George coming up the stairs and he introduces me on my third day to the space shuttle astronauts who he was <laughs> giving a tour of. It's my first time meeting George Lucas and, a, you know, certainly my first time, you know, meeting anyone who's ever been to space. So at the same moment I'm in, so George is introducing, you know, the the showing them around, introducing the the concept artists to the astronauts who he's worked with for a couple of years at this point, these artists. But then he comes to me and he's like, and who are you? You know, like George gives you this look like, uh, like I mean, you're you here. here. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, me thankfully I was with Faye. So Faye kind of covered for me and introduced me to George. And but that was the moment that I met George, was the same moment that I'm and they and the special so you met George were, in a double take yes pretty much like George was just like and you are and you're here why um and um and the, the spatial astronauts were at Skywalker Ranch because they were returning the screen used Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi to George because it had been in space with them um and I just happened to walk in the front door at the moment that they were literally handing it back to George that morning um and so that was an interesting third day at work <laughs> um i never had another day like that again you know but i of course had many great days um, did you get to hold the lightsaber did they no i don't know what happened with it after george got it he might have just brought it to his office and put it down somewhere or something did a drawer it was in a drawer <laughs> yeah, exactly. for years he's just like i'll just put it over there it'll be fine but um i'm gonna open the that a museum soon we'll put it in there. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'm sure it ended up in the archive at some point but um but yeah no that was a, a really wild third day and i was remember driving home that day and just being like is it like this all the time at lucasfilm like what is my life this is crazy um and was just it an incredible was it day like it? was it like that no it was just like it was kind of like beginner's luck you know it was just like <laughs> my third day just happened to be one of the weirdest days that i ever had at, at, at the office but I mean, there's been many incredible days since then, and I've had so many amazing opportunities. But that one always jumps to mind just because it was like my third day, my first day meeting George, and somehow the space shuttle astronauts were also in the mix at that day. So. But more impressive than that is the fact that you got that Lego Yoda fountain. <laughs> is that more impressive though? <laughs> no, that's that's pretty awesome as well. But... That's a memory you keep. Uh, yes. well, thank you, Phil. Everyone should follow Phil on his socials, uh, wherever, wherever he may wind up. I <laughs> yeah. know he's on Twitter and Instagram right now. Precisely. I don't know. Yeah. Have you made it to Blue but Sky who, yet? I have made it to Blue Sky. So if you're on Blue Sky, you can find me there, but I literally done one post and that's it. So, uh, not much is happening. In <laughs> well, the world we'll see what the future for holds for all of us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a changing landscape, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, exactly. So what the future holds. But yes, definitely follow Phil. There's a, a lot of, of curated content uh, on there uh, and just a, a wonderful photo from Spinal Tap. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if you've enjoyed watching Force 5 or any of this stuff, please consider uh, hitting like and subscribe, which is a thing that people say that you <laughs> should do. That'd be very much appreciated. Uh, if you want to support anything, there's a Patreon link uh, below, patreon.com slash Ken Plume. Uh, there's also a tipping link if you want to do that, or an Amazon wish list if you want to do that and support that. Whatever. I'm just happy that you're here. And you, and you showed up and made it to the end of this wonderful conversation with a wonderful person, with a wonderful guest. Phil, obviously I don't know how to end these things, so we probably <laughs> should just say goodbye and wave to everyone. So, yes. Bye. Bye. May the force be with you. He said it. <laughs>